All right, look at that. We made it back for another night of D&D on Kronos World. I am so excited for tonight for several reasons. Uh, one of those reasons being that uh, we have a new player joining us. Uh, and I am super excited about that. You'll be able to meet Serenity here in a few moments, but uh, she graciously, graciously ex uh, uh, decided to join us on the Saltmarsh Legends team, and we're all super stoked about that. Um, we are also going to be um running through this special campaign uh, called the secret of the porbiner and i'm super excited about that tonight it's uh i'll let uh, uh, as far as our other announcement we have a, a special uh, gm that's going to be with us tonight and uh, I'm, uh, that's going to be a lot of fun i believe he is a um a professional uh, gm from down in uh, aussie town and uh, we're super excited to be running through this little adventure with him tonight uh so a quick shout out uh, for this adventure there was a lot of uh, um, just creators that came together of all sorts to kind of put this adventure together. There was Steel Fleet, Limithron, of course, our, our own channel sponsor. We're super stoked to have him on board this adventure. Um, Forgotten Adventures does amazing creative assets. We had Michael Gelfi Music, D20 Music, Loot Tavern, It's a D&D &D Monster Now, and Tavern of Trinkets. So many creators came together to make this, and uh, it it is so dope and you can actually if you have the foundry just go in there install it and the whole thing is set up and ready for you it's such a complete adventure from these creators and i definitely encourage you to go check that out uh, you can like i said get it on the foundry or you could go to uh, the dm's guild and just download it and and figure it out for yourself from there definitely a couple of ways to go about that definitely go to limithron's patreon and check out his stuff there he's got some awesome links there for you to check out and uh, while you're there, you know, check out the Chronos World Patreon. It definitely helps to kind of keep this channel going and keep all these shows going for the, everybody to kind of enjoy. So we definitely appreciate your support there, too. Um, all of that being said, I just want to turn this right on over to our guest GM because I just want to start blasting things with my maniacal new character. It's going to be so fun and so awesome. So let me go ahead and jump this screen right on over to that live set. And hello, everybody. Hello to our players. Um, this is uh, James Vincent. He is our guest GM for tonight, and I am super excited. And I will go ahead and let James take it from here. Hello, everyone. Hi, players. Uh, and thank you. Thanks so much for the invitation to join. I'm James. I'm a dungeon master for RPG at Home And um, thanks so much for this special invitation to join you guys for a fantastic, kind of spectacular today. We're, we're going to be playing a a very special one-shot, um, The Secret of the Porvenir. Um, this is an adventure of the macabre, a, a sorrowful tale of a majestic ship lost on the high cities and a poor group of adventurers who have, uh, who have encountered it, potentially for their demise. Um, I'm really, really thrilled to be joining you guys and this amazing players from Saltmarsh Legends. Uh, I can't wait to introduce you to their characters. I've had a bit of a uh, prior to this game, and they are uh, a very strange bunch of individuals indeed, so we'll, uh, we'll be introducing them. But um, uh, I'm not sure uh, if everyone knows it. Perhaps if the players could introduce them to each other, and then uh, we'll, we'll be dealing with their characters very, very shortly. A quick, a quick introduction around the room, for those who might not know each other. Norman, why don't you start up? Uh, Galrock, why don't you start to the top left? Oh, am I? Okay. Yeah, you're... Um, uh, what's up? My name's Eric. AKA Majestic Fable of the Endless Road, AKA that Cobalt Ranger from back in the day. I guess I'm also Ancient Man Beast, which is a name that stuck around since my Xbox days. That's why I still have it uh, on Twitch. Uh, yeah. Is it just my, just me, right? Just yes, you. Yep, yeah. yep, we'll do. No we'll one cares do about the game we're playing. I mean, I also have like, I have some royal lineage. I have some like princely titles, but I don't think you guys want to hear that. So. <laughs> Sounds interesting to me. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Tibbs, you're next. Hi, I'm Gibbs, or A Gibbs loves you in Twitch and all my other stuff. Um, I am playing mm, Nashima. They about their name, and uh, what you doing? How she, what, what she looks like, and all that. No, no, no. Later, later, no. later. It's just okay. a quick name. I just. Okay, that's all. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, um. Oh, good. Hi, I'm, I'm Jared. I play Sid. Sid was ordered has to get to Geralt built this park. 
uh, in our Salt Marsh game, and I'm playing Norman Vontality in our game tonight. Hey, my queen. Hey, I'm Quinson, or the, the Big Quinn in our Discord. I play Amaros in our Salt Marsh game, and uh, Kellen, the gnome brother to Jelen, in our Sunday's game. <laughs> All right, uh, and I am Indigo. You guys all know my face. I am the uh, owner and producer of Kronos World, and um, yeah, other than that, you don't need to worry about me. You can find uh, <laughs> Kronos World on all of the uh, social media stuff. Please go check it out. Do all the liking, do all the button clicking, and all of those things. Always appreciated any support that we get here, absolutely. And I'm excited to go pew, pew, pew. Let's do the thing. Yeah. And of course, a special uh, introduction to Serenity, who's joining the first game. That's ready. Have people get in touch with you? Do they have you have you played much before? Uh, not anywhere that anyone would see. I think I might have played one episode uh, on YouTube somewhere. I I uh, took over a character for one session. Apparatus is a Warforge artificer. Very interesting. Um, but other than that, yeah, no, I I'm not really. People can't really find me anywhere. <laughs> Well, they will be able to after this, so thanks, thanks for that. Tell us your home address. No, please don't. Please don't <laughs> listen. the only Canadian audience. <laughs> Wait, what, what's, what's the accent? Uh, Canadians have? Uh, hey. I don't understand why her head's not doing the floppy thing. I, why? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> yeah, that one good. In certain parts of Canada, you'll get out in the boat. Like, there's no oot in the boot. I've never understood that one. Yeah. Which but is yeah, strange, okay. because this is a nautical adventure, so there'll be a lot of being on a, a boot. boot. So there will be in lots of boots. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Okay, so, uh, welcome everyone. This is going to be a great little uh, hour <laughs> as we get deep into the macabre nautical adventure that is the secret of the full veneer. Um, we begin our adventure on the Grand Sonyare, which is a brigandine of Lady Candelaria Sonnavella, one of the owners of the Fin Danzan uh, Venture Company, one of the richest families within the region. Uh, she's assembled you all on top of this beautiful vessel as a, as a party of mercenary adventurers, a group of ragtag miscreants willing to do a, anything to someone with enough coin, to someone with enough, uh, enough influence. And this is a very powerful family. The Sonavella family owns a large number of trading ships and as one of the finest of these ships has apparently gone missing just weeks before it was due to pull into its home port. Lady, uh, Lady Sonavella has lost an absolute fortune here, but doesn't seem to mind so much. It doesn't seem to matter because what she needs recovered and what you've been signed on to recover for her is a small group of crates, some family heirlooms that she has displaced with uh, the disappearance of this, this ship. She doesn't know how many of these crates survive. She does know that they are priceless family heirlooms and they're returning from the old country back to her home. The ship in question, the poor veneer, has returned. It has seemingly reappeared after being lost for nearly a month another one of the Findazan Venture, Venture Company ships have reported her uh, reappearing at a place called Fell Cave, a tropical island in the middle of the sea. The ship has appeared, but has appeared hail. No crew can be seen on her decks. And so uh, the Lady Sonavella has engaged you all to try and find these crates of heirlooms. She's understandably worried about the, uh, the dangers of and what has befallen her crew. But of course, as a fearless band of adventurer mercenaries, uh, it hasn't concerned you whatsoever. She's offered you a grand prize of over a thousand gold pieces to sail with her to the archipelago of Felke and explore the poor veneer. She'll pay you an extra 250 gold for each crate you recover. Assuming the crew is dead, you're able to retrieve any items that you wish. And so it is that you've joined the crew 
of the Grand Sognare, this beautiful brigandine, a beautifully uh, carved and, uh, and fitted out ship. And you've now been there for around about a week. For the lady, you've not seen anything. She has uh, she has sequestered herself away in her cabins, only aided by her uh, her valets and her philosophical advisor, Signor Altivo. And despite the lady's behaviour, your journey has been very enjoyable. You've been assigned a large cabin aboard the ship. You've been provided with fine food and you've been paid with as much rum as you can consume. So for a group of mercenary adventurers, this has been extremely enjoyable. Days spent aboard a beautiful uh, a ship, uh, training in the martial uh, traits that you do, kind of practicing sparring on the decks of a beautiful sea breeze, and then at night, carousing, drinking rum with the crew, playing cards, enjoying yourselves immensely. The crew and the captain are very well skilled, as you would expect from a, from a high paying uh, mistress, as the lady. Uh, you've made very short time of your journey and it's been a very affable, friendly time. You do notice, however, that the crew has shown signs of weariness. The lady Sonnabella has kind of, she has that reputation, I guess, of being from a very rich and powerful family that would not look kindly on people that would slight her. And so it is, it's the evening of the sixth day on board and you are closing in on the quarry, the Porvina. And for the very first time, Lady Sonavella has summoned you all to her captain, fire, to, to her cabin for her final dinner before your arrival at Felco. And hopefully the lost treasure, of the Porvina. You're gathered together on the main deck gathered together in her large cabin, and in front of you, she has spread an incredible feast. Fine wines, roasted meat, tropical fruits, and a large quantity of rum greets you. You see bottles spread out across this entire table. She's wearing a beautiful bodice dress. She has a large jewelry draped all over her. This looks like an ostentatious way of uh, kind of showing her wealth and power. And she gestures you all, welcoming everyone, and her valets do their best of pulling out chairs, uh, providing napkins on your lap, and pouring you all a large tankard of rum. The Lady Sonavella is joined by her advisor, Senor Tivo, who is a balding fat man with uh, your kind of wispy side hairs that he wouldn't even deign to do as a comb over. You see that he's sweating profusely as usual. And she and he sits next to the, the quite charming middle-aged Lady Savella. She raises her own tankard. Says, Welcome to you all. Thank you so much for joining this grand adventure. Here, here. I'm holding a turkey leg to uh <laughs> as uh, as you sit down among fantastic, bountiful feast with the Lady Sonavella. Perhaps uh, we could introduce your characters. I might start with, uh, with, um, who we start with? We'll start with Nasima, if that's okay. Can you describe okay. Nasima and who she is? Nasima is a kind of middle height, average height uh, woman. She is very pale blue skin, white hair. That comes about as mine now does. And she has these kind of, not carvings, but like an imprint on her skin of what looks like just swirls on just the left side of her uh, face and on her arm. And she is dressed in almost like black um what is the word leathery kind of fabric not armor but like with a, a long sleeve I can't think of the shirt name now shirt and some uh, pants with small heeled boots uh and she kind of stands up straight, uh, 
respectful and shows that she and stern. No worries. Uh, next to her, I think, has been seated Norman. Norman's it. Yes. Perhaps Norman, you can introduce yourself. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that for that riveting introduction. I'm Norman Von Talley. Uh I'm a gentleman, of course, in a fine leather suit. I keep with me a, a proper cane. Uh, I have a cigar in my mouth, but even though it's smoking, there's no scent of smoke because I'm not rude. I'm not going to smoke indoors while we enjoying this fine dinner. Uh, Norman fancies himself a bit of a uh, bit of a debonair, bit of a, a gentleman, and uh, often has his uh, his unseen servant Sigil uh, prepare and and grab food for him and move around the cabin. So if, don't be alarmed if you see anything moving. It's probably just Sigil fetching me something here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks forward to continuing this fine feast. Uh, perhaps a little bit less civilized than, uh, than Norman. Uh, Galrock sits at the other side of the table. That's an understatement. She's <laughs> very civilized. civilized. She doesn't put Run. on airs the same way, maybe, as his friend Norman. Uh, Galrock is a large half orc. Um, he's his dress is kind of a mix of like different cultures like it looks like he's picked up stuff from kind of everywhere he's traveled which is rather vast um he has a lot of tattoos some of them are faded and stretched to the point that he must have gotten them when he was young um a lot of piercings he probably isn't wearing his armor in here but he definitely has his great axe which on the half everyone can clearly see the words tree vein carved in um and he certainly has sacks tied with him that jangle as he walks kind of like wood clinking um and i think most of the characters would probably know what those are um but i don't think the the uh, lady would um yeah he's definitely not he's definitely not as put on as norman but he, he definitely knows he looks like he's not phased by any of this ostentatious wealth he doesn't look impressed or phased at all like he's been around this before um well he lacks in decor he makes up in personality Yes, I have a lot of that. Also, I have a great business plan, lady. I've been meaning to talk to you about. Perhaps let's everyone else introduce no. himself at the table. Got. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, right. yes. One, one moment. She says. Uh, on the, I guess, whether you would even be noticed. Uh, Lafari is quite a, a diminutive uh, woman. Um, would you like to, to to describe her if you can appear? Find the the tank of the uh, relatively oversized tank. Your, your hands? Yes. Yeah, so, like you said, ships aren't exactly made to be very tall on the inside of the company's cabins, so Yeller, who's a good 8 foot 2, is having some problems with the seating. Um, he is actually in his armor. Uh, he does not have his shield with him, but he is in chainmail armor. He is. He has an a very large amulet that hangs down from his neck that has the symbol of tear on it. Uh, besides that, he is... Uh, his face is, you know, he, typical fur blog is sort of light blue almost in coloring. Sort, almost like little, little little green in there. He has uh, sort of tribal markings on his face. Sort of runic. And anyone who knows anything about fur blogs knows that these are the signs of him being... Um, an outcast. Like, he is not part of a tribe any longer having these markings. Uh, he's still relatively young for a Furball, though he is an adult. Um, besides that, he has sort of a stern face with sort of a wise hazel eyes. Though you can see that near his mouth and the corners of his eyes, he seems like a person who actually might smile quite a lot for how stern his face is. And as far as dealing with our current accommodations, he's probably currently trying to see if removing the chair and just sitting on the floor works better than trying to stoop over the table. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I think the valets would, would concur. And, and you know, as, you, as they try and figure out a way to kind of wedge you in a chair and put a napkin, like, I think, 
lost cause relatively quickly and kind of move move a number of chairs around away from the whole side of the blood around trying to try and make you as relatively comfortable as you can these cramped conditions. Um and and finally uh Xantia. Uh, <coughs> I'm not even going to try. Uh over to you, uh, Indigo. <laughs> Do you want to describe what Xantia looks like? Uh yeah, definitely um uh, she would see uh, this figure walk in, kind of a uh, um, decked head to toe uh, in all black, um, with these um, uh, like plates of a uh, you know sets of plate like half plate, um, kind of protecting the vital areas of my body. Um, I have a uh, complete, uh, completely covered head, like a face mask uh, that goes all the way around my head, uh, like a full wrap. Um, and it seems to be some sort of like a, uh, um, a metal substance, uh, that's kind of wrapped around my head and, uh, just kind of have, um, just some like breathing holes kind of like, look like they've been like tapped through or drilled through in the mouth area. And, uh, I would just kind of walk up and just kind of wave my hand and you'd see a, a chair kind of slide out on its own and then sit down and then just not even touching the rum, just kind of look over uh, to the lady and just kind of slowly nod. Uh, the valets will keep a very cautious distance, I think, uh, from, from the dreads and here. Lady Sonavella kind of says, thank you very much. And, and welcome everybody to, to uh, this great feast. I am so very, very thankful to have your service over this journey, and I must apologize to everyone. I have been uh, very uh, doing some research and conducting some of the level of business reports, so uh, please forgive my aloofness, please forgive that I have not been able to speak with you and meet with you, and eat with you for these nights. Nice but I thought it appropriate we come together and we celebrate uh, perhaps uh, your, your good fortune. I understand the captain said that uh, we arrive at uh, at Felthead by first light. I uh, just wanted to uh, wish you well in your journey, um, and and Godspeed to uh, to recover my property. These things most priceless, most priceless, most treasured possessions. Wonderful evidence that we bring from the old country back to our back to our new world. Actually, um, I appreciate the meal you provided for us all in pursuit of your heirlooms is there an actual because i've heard we're looking for crates is there an actual symbol on the crates we're looking for something that will oh, easily identify what we're going to be picking up oh, oh of course they're all branded with the fenders adventure um you will see them and you'll notice and, and, and you've seen it you know the kind of vd that's kind of stamped on a lot of the property you've seen around the place um I will say, Yellow, though, you, you're, uh, with your um, passive insight, you notice that she she is kind of doing a, a few sideward glances to her advisor when she kind of talks about, about the nature of the cargo. So, um, you know, even though she says, yes, they're, they're, you know, simple, it's easy to find, but you, you can't get a sense that she's a problem. Can I, uh, can I roll an now, insight check? Yellow. Yellow, yellow's, yellow's got such a high level of insight that he's got some straight line. Mm. So you mentioned business. <laughs> oh, yes. You I have got eyes. a business proposition for you. It's really? going Again? to change everything. I've been working on this the whole time. I pull out like a stack and I put down a little wooden figurine of like a mummy and a witch. Uh, and I say, this is, I'm working on a full, full Halloween line of figurines. Uh, this is this is Mandy Mummy and this is Wanda the Witch. They were twins at birth, but they were separated and only met each other in college. Uh, I have a whole backstory for all of them, and I start pulling out other wooden figurines. Oh. Um, I just don't um. like hotcakes. All my friends here have have, uh, have have tested them, right? Everyone uh, loves them. Who who had five minutes into dinner? Who had five? <laughs> I had three. Uh. <laughs> I, I, I try to have faith. That's a 10. I'm here. <laughs> That's a loss for you. I think I win, but I think I win the pot. I just put a gold piece onto the table and slide it down to Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Sigil will fetch that gold piece for me, please. Thank you. 
I don't. These are toys for children. I mean, children, adults, they're collectibles. You know, children grow up, and the things they remember in their childhood becomes valuable as adults. It's kind of a long-term business plan. Uh, yeah, so you know, you can keep those. Those are limited prototypes. Uh, uh, thank you, Altivo. Take them, take them away. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm yes. sure that uh, that once you retrieve my property, uh, I'm. I'm to provide you the reward, I, I imagine that you do very well in an investment of your own. Uh, I think you would have more than enough capital to start that venture without money. All right, I'll put you down for 15%. Oh, Good. Oh. I give a thumbs up to Norman. Uh, uh, excellent job, my friend. Excellent. Well, uh, excellent. Well, yeah. We can iron out the details perhaps later on. I think uh, uh, my friend is, is very talented carving figures that's that's it's very certain yes yes he's very 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 talented anyway anyways um i, I just thought i'd uh, I'd, I'd introduce you uh, uh, help yourselves um there's more than what, whatever you wish uh, just ask the valets uh, i hope that you have a, a pleasant evening i i, I must uh, retire myself but um but uh, good luck for the morning <laughs> I give a thumbs up. Oh, sorry. Did uh, I'm sorry. Yellow, yellow. Did she uh, did she tell us how long this uh, cargo has been missing? Ah, uh, you can ask. By all means. Uh, uh, she had said that uh, it had been the the ship had been missing for around a month. Okay. So it had it had reappeared according to another one of her, her ships. Do we know how big these crates are, or anything about, like, we just know that the symbols on them, but we don't know the size, but, like, uh, and she does not know, because she, so they'd be stamped by, um, they would be stamped by, by her logo. She wouldn't know the size. Oh, okay, she wouldn't know the size. How long have you been in the new country, as you put it? You mentioned these are coming from the old world to the new. What yes, is, what impacts the old world, and... Well, of course, we are but a, a, the new colonies where we live is, uh, has only just been established, of course, by our, by our families. Um, you, uh, you, you know that we are, we are part of the, the, the new emergence, the new civilization. Of course, of course. And so you'd be aware that, uh, that I mean, talking outside this is this is not necessarily connected to the salt marsh world but this is you know this is a relatively new kind of civilized uh, this is the new the new world so to speak where the old world has kind of come to a peninsula and has established it so very much a maritime almost in the 16th century but real world by just in space and is her advisor gonna does he seem to be following her as she's trying to leave yeah, 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 yeah. Altivo and uh, and and the have the chambers that you have not been able to. She spends the majority of her time. And what about her advisor? Has he also majorly not been around? Correct. Yeah. yeah. The two of them have been very good. You might see We've them. been mainly corresponding with just the crew, the captain. The crew and the captain. Yep, the crew and the captain. Yep. So we're on the the ship that we're on now is on the way to. Uh, the, the Parvenir? Correct. And should be arriving at Phil K. In this island, Phil K., is it, is it, uh, uh, is there like a settlement there? Is it uh, yeah. just, just empty? Yeah. An, yeah. an empty tropical island. In the middle of, the <coughs> okay. in the middle of an, uh, an archipelago of islands six days from the nearest supply. So are we just taking a rowboat over to this thing? Or? Uh, yes. So essentially the, the plan is, this is some Yara the Grand Sonyare would uh, kind of sidle up towards it and, uh, and, and you would row across. So perhaps we, we cut forward to the morning and, and we can actually discuss that if you like. Uh, if you want a description, if you have no more yeah. questions for the lady before she retires. Um, the only thing I would do as soon as, as once she is gone, yep. I would uh, sort of go to, you know, 
scoop my way around each around the small cabin and sort of whisper in everyone's ear, trying to make sure that the um, the attendants don't hear that you know our our host our our employer seems to be a bit shifty when it comes to her simple wares that we need to find. Shifty about what? As you whisper in my ear, I just kind of slowly nod without saying anything. Yalrock, we I've had conversations with you about this much. You have you have a very powerful voice. Which Why? is wonderful, wonderful. But sometimes, especially when we're inside and I'm trying and you you notice that I'm trying to be quiet while I talk to you. So you just Turn it down. Just I'm a little bit. The, Does I'm he though? The of all my siblings, so I think I'm crazy. I think I. Ah. That's a little scary. That is slightly terrifying. I think you're giving him an awful okay. lot of credit for that he even noticed that you're trying to talk quietly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I try to. <laughs> Do you remember our conversation about our stealthy voices? Well, I remember you whispering something while sneaking around in shadows, but mm-hmm. I was looking at a really robust elm that I wanted to cut down, and I was not paying attention at all. So. Well, fair enough. Elm is very distracting. <sighs> it, was a beautiful, it was a beautiful elm. Oh, my God. Robust, you say? Yes, quite robust. Hmm. Good to know. <laughs> <sighs> uh... When not the qualities that would make a tree robust. You don't know. Mm-mm. That's probably well, best we leave the rope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, she did it. She did she did the thing. into detail about, you know, the sheen of the bark or the hardwood or you know, it has to be in the right amount of sunlight versus the soil density. It just gets way too The thickness of it. As he enters that spiel, I've told everyone what I wanted to say, so... <laughs> when yellow, the... yellow will be going outside of this very cramped tavern. Uh, uh, yellow, uh, cabin. Uh, or, or, <laughs> I do, you know, these rich types, they always have something else going on. It's, my mother once said, you know, the rich stay rich because they have a million secret dealings behind everybody's back and manipulate everything, so... That is yeah, that's what the class is saying. Beautifully said. Um, Poetry. Your your mother was very insightful. She was. And so it is that as Yella leaves, Galrock continues on another evening of uh, of conspiracy theory and rum. The whole time Uh, I never touch my food or the rum that's in front of me. Uh, You you kind of uh, spend the night uh, in that last level of carousing. That, that last grand drinking meeting from getting to know each other and preparing, I guess, for the day ahead. So it is that uh, as dawn strikes and, the, um, and you, you get that great sense of sea air, great sense of the swell of the ship, the Grand Signore emerges on uh, around the floor. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. The sky is blue, it's that, got that great tropical weather, a, a beautiful stiff sea wind breeze um, that blows over the deck. Uh, and and the crew is making great time. Um, the sails are luffing, uh, a fantastic kind of uh, forward journey, and the, this beautiful spirit of, of sea air that kind of swirls in the entire boat. The crew are very, in very high spirits. I um, see this, this large archipelago of uh, uh, this dotted chain of tropical islands. Uh, 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 and you see it from quite a distance away, you know, from a number of miles, and you can see the you can see this, this large ship of the line, one of the largest styles of ships around on the ocean. Um, it, is a, it is a beautiful vessel uh, that, that appears in view. A vessel that, um, uh, that has a number of different, different decks. It's got, uh, it's, it's got three strong masts with large, you know, large rigged sails, but, but none of the sails are rigged up at the moment. They, they, they like there. And the, and the boat seems to be anchored um, well within the, the lee of the area, provide a level of shelter. Uh, for those with water vehicle proficiencies, can I get you to make an intelligence roll and add your uh, proficiency bonus for me? Can I use wisdom? 
yeah. Yep, yeah, that's okay. Yep. Yeah, it's such you can't roll tools through this. Um, so can I just roll survival? It would be the same thing, right? Sure. Yep. Um, I do have navigator's tools. Uh, no, I think this is very much a sit on shit. Wow, yellow, fantastic. <laughs> Natural one. All right. You gotta get that out of the way quickly. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are rolling. Uh... Yeah. Uh, just those that are proficient with with water vehicles. It all came so, down to you, Quinn, and you uh, screwed the pooch. Yeah, which is well. Um, now, Galrock, you would know. You, you've seen vessels anchored like this. What you see is that there is a, a fore and aft anchor line, and the vessel seems to have been positioned in such a way it's, it's sheltered, but it's also anchored to make a fast escape. This is this is something where where the, the, the vessel itself is pointed in order to be able to make an escape out of the sea. Um, so it's like, it's like one side uh, uh, next to the islands, and then one side just out of the mm. sea. Or is it... uh, imagine that it's stern, to, yeah. So so that it's kind of it's like it's been reversed back up to the back up to the. Back oh, up to the... okay. It, you mean, okay, you mean the ship itself is a fast hit? I thought you meant like people off the deck. Okay. I does uh, yeah. doesn't pirate actually... give me vehicles, water vehicles? Uh. I, we'll have to look I it up. don't know, to be honest. Sorry, off the top of my head. No, um, right. I know Sailor does. I'm not sure the pirate does. So, and, and I would know that is actually quite <clears> typical. <throat> like how? So, first of all, this is a warship, or this is a large merchant ship. Uh, a ship of the line is is a warship. A warship. Um, a, a, a significant ship. It's got a number of cannon. You can see the holes. There would be about forty a side. It does. It does um, give you uh, water vehicles. It does. Yeah. Um, look, Galrock's rolled very, very well. I'm ha happy for you to roll it anyway to see if you can beat a 23. 23 and how good. close is this to the island itself? Uh, I would say it's probably around 100 yards. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty close. close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it would have to be like an expert navigator's positioning get this close. Like it's yep. keel, it has a lot, I'm assuming it has like a keel, right? Yes, correct. So, so however they've done this, it's done expertly. You can see that there is breaking reef. Um, this is in a very sheltered, narrow area, and however they've done it, they've managed to almost reverse the ship in this space. Okay, I'll call a team meeting on deck. Yep. Uh, team meeting. I do have water vehicles. By the way. Okay. Would you like to make an intelligence no. and add your proficiency, guys? No, it's all good. He did a good job. Um, okay, I've been kind of like just sitting uh, at the bow of the ship, uh, facing out, you know, in the direction that we're going, just um, sitting on a crate or something and just kind of uh, with my legs crossed and meditating. Um, when he uh, kind of calls for the team meeting, I just kind of like come up off of the, uh, the where I'm sitting and uh, head towards wherever he is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Emerging from their yeah. cabins and, uh, and, and we gotta we gotta get into a tight huddle. It's uh, too early for another sales pitch, my friend. I grab you. It's not, it's not the time for that. I do not huddle. <laughs> we grab you to huddle. You have to huddle. It's the only way. I resist I the huddle. I think even if we even if we huddle, people are still gonna hear. Right, you don't know how to whisper. All right. Uh, so I mean that's a robust ship, as you guys can tell. Um, That's our word again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's all the right terms, but uh, it's very suspiciously a, a master uh, navigator would have had to uh, uh, anchor it that way. It looks like they were ready for You wouldn't do that unless you wanted to quickly throw your sails out and get, sail off and escape. So I don't know what we're dealing with. This doesn't seem doesn't seem like it was left here. It just ran, seems like very deliberate. So you know, girdle, girdle, girdle your loins and prepare for unfriendliness, I think. Gawark, is there a way when we get onto the ship to prevent it from making an escape while we're well, on it? it's perhaps? anchored, so it can't go anywhere and the sails aren't down and there's no crew. Uh, I mean in the way of sabotage. Just to be sure. Well, you could sabotage the anchor line, certainly. I mean, we plan to be on the actual ship exploring it. If they were to escape, they can't really escape while we're on it. Well, they could. We would just be hostage yeah. on a ship moving. 
in a direction that we have no intention of going. Well, I'll leave that to you, Norman, with your little quick hands. Uh, if you can sabotage the anchor lines. Okay, so we, we wouldn't want to sabotage the anchor line while we're on the ship, because then we might end up going out. No, yeah. I mean, sorry. I mean, sabotage it so it, it cannot be raised. You could, ah, yeah. Okay. Perhaps there's a mechanism or something that we can malfunction to uh, prevent the ship from leaving if we don't want to. We're only here to get the crates, so... The, the, the shape of the ship after we leave is irrelevant to us. But she said we could have anything that the crew left. Uh, so. Does that include the ship? Is that, you're right. Oh my god. Wait. Yellow, does that include the ship? Isn't the ship hers? Not the crew's? The ship oh. is the property of the company. I'm not sure that it's intended yet. Um, I, I just but, shake but, my head uh, without saying anything. I just shake my head. I mean, it wasn't stipulated, so. Oh, the right. gray area to me. You're right. <laughs> the contract. There must be a loophole. <laughs> there is nothing said. There's nothing within the contract. <laughs> so, uh, to to uh, go with your preparation there, I have two things I'd wish to do for our party before we go. One would be a discussion, the other one would be... Um, if we want to be more, um, I guess, incognito, or at least not reliant on rowing, I do have the water walking spell for us, so that we can literally walk over the waves if we wish to come from a different direction or something. Well, Maybe something huh? like that. Hmm? Yeah, let me check something. Yeah. Well, of course. Unless you want to carry it. Oh. I'm, I'm just saying if we were to do something less straightforward. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps we save water walking in case we need it. Like for a hasty retreat or something. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm letting you know that I have it. Good to know. Not that is awesome. I definitely, you didn't tell me you had that before, and now I really want to run <laughs> Why have you been holding out? For that reason, probably. Because you wouldn't be able to keep up with this ship. But Galrock, you would want to wait until there were the bigger waves, and then that way... Oh you could... There you You're go. You're right. Stop. Stop it. Uh, as a side note, how, how are we expected to actually get these crates? Yeah, so a large keel boat has been provided for so that you're able to row out and enough room to take any Which... supplies. Is there a crane on this uh, fair? Is there like a different part of the crane? Or... Uh, th there's not a crane per se. There's plenty of block and tack. Um, okay. and, and, you know, with, a, with enough brute strength, you'd be able to swing it across. That, that's okay. what we're doing. And, and as a group of you with, with, with your um, maritime background, as opposed to a uh, fiscal model, you've got plenty of equipment. What could go wrong? We just get onto the ship, get the crates, come right back. Don't say easy, that. easy peasy. Uh, why? Why would you say why that? Why would you tempt the fates? <laughs> why else he, would you? he does that, and then um, to go with my second point, just to do this so that we keep as many people as whole and healthy as possible. I would ask that you receive the blessing of my Lord here, and let him fill you with vitality. <laughs> As I'm going to cast aid at the third level nice. on our, uh, I can never say names right. Norman Zanatier. 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 And Lafara? Lafaria? Yep. That's yeah. it. Use three, get aid at the third level. So, how many tank hit points does that provide? Actually, aid is one of. Because they are not temporary points, but uh, since I'm casting at the third level, it is 10 uh, points to your maximum and current HP for eight hours. Fantastic. So uh, they're not temporary, but you can be healed up to that. Your health pool increases for eight hours. Uh, fantastic. So, can you three please go ahead on your sheets? And of course. Just overwrite your maximum hit points. And so, with that, with one last prayer to Tia. Uh, the the keel boat is brought alongside the big B, 
and uh, the crew kind of assist you uh, as the as the the, the road or the large war boat, I guess it's probably with a thundering splash. You hear the sound of gulls above, mm-hmm. and you really get that that splash of sea waves, that that full salty blast of, 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 of sea air as you climb down the rigging of, of, of your vessel and kind of climb on board. There's always that precarious moment when you move from the stability of a large ship to a smaller boat as you kind of use oars to cast off and then start to, to head in towards the waves. Uh, this is a four or large keel boat. <coughs> so four of you will be required to row and the other two I guess can keep you out or as you kind of start moving away across the sea. Sigil um, will, will be rowing for me, so there's only three spots left remaining. Sigil, grab an oar, please. There's this kind of surreal moment where the, the kind of moves almost with almost uh, mechanical back and forth time. I'm uh, gonna, I'm gonna walk to the sense. bow of the uh, the rowboat and just kind of stand uh, right in the bow, looking out over the water. And going for that, yeah. Uh, uh, can I get to make a perception check? Uh, and uh, for those that are rowing, I'd like. Uh, and Nas- oh, yeah. Nasima's yeah. rowing. Yep. What? What did you want us to do? Sorry, you cut out. Uh, a- a- athletics checks, please, for those that are that, that, for those that are taking the oars. Only I three think extra to first, first kind of just sat down and like didn't do anything, and then realized that <laughs> he definitely needs to be rowing. <laughs> Would you like me to roll an athletics check for Sid? It's so weird uh, to hear you say Sid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wait, Sid's here? Awesome. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's fine. That's okay. I'll... That's excellent, because I have no clue how to roll an athletic score. <laughs> <for people laughs> for, for, for an unseen servant. No, no. I mean, so everyone kind of puts their backs to it, start moving oh. back and forth. Quick check. Yeah. 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 I don't know if the four foot two health lane would be very <laughs> helpful could, with rope. You, could you give me the help action by braiding my hair for four? <laughs> that I can do. I have very much of fingers. Okay, because I, I really, really, it's very unruly right now, and I need it apparently because I'm the lowest roll. Uh, uh, as, so, the, as the three of you and an unseen okay. server put your backs to the wheel and kind of start rowing towards, uh, for um, for uh, the dread Zantia up on the bow, you you scan the vessel as, as you're approaching, and and this is a beautifully large line. This is well made. Again, a lot of carving, a lot of intricate carving above the upper decks. Um, you see that the the masts and splays are in very good condition. The rope seems to be, you know pristine in some ways uh, but there are the sails are all are all tied there's no there's no sail around you cannot see a single person on the deck but what you do see is on the main crow's nest far above the vessel there's a large nest that you see that there's a pelican kind of sitting there and it looks like this nest has been kind of made over a period of weeks and then as you look on the bow strip at the very front of the vessel you also see there's a second pelican this, it looks as though these animals have kind of roosted within the, within the spaces and have had ample opportunity to do so. So the pelicans have taken over the crow's nests? Yeah, it looks like it. It's been a revolution <laughs> of... <laughs> do, um, do the, the sails... Uh, you said the ropes look like they're in really good condition. Do the sails look like they're um, damaged at all? Because if they've, the ship's been gone for a month, it seems like the ocean would have done something uh well they're 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 stowed so that they're all rolled up and and tied up and tied away as far as you can tell as far as you can tell it doesn't seem to be outside them it looks abandoned oh what was that all right said it looks abandoned (laughs) A ship that's been missing for a, a month. People might need to go look for, you know, sustenance, so they might abandon the ship. Would make sense. So approaching the vessel, um, rowing as fast as you can, you emerge 
uh, you merge to the side of the Torvanir. Um, it is, like I say, it's a, it's a daunting vessel. You know, this is a two-story above the water, you know, kind of sides. And so so it's, it's one of those large ones. You notice that there are gun ports and ports closed. But there is that kind of rigging that comes down the side of the vessel that allows you to quite easily kind of uh, uh, grip yourself up, um, bring your your uh, your keel boat aside, and then one by one you can climb all the decks. And so without need to go up, like, what can you everyone to the map, if you could bring the map up, that show you what see when you arrive at the port of the All right, we're going to switch right on over to the battle scene so everybody out there can see what we are seeing. My power armor is activated. It's kind of perpetually activated because I see no reason for it not to be. But I just want to let you know, just in case. You see the suit kind of the suit kind of shimmers a bit and tightens up and gets really form fitting, and then there's gloves kind of now come out from underneath, like uh, the cuff of uh, his suit jacket. Oh. So I hope I trust you guys can see the most stunning map from Limitron. I think oh, it's a very beautiful, beautiful ship. Gorgeous. And I appreciate so, all. Yes. Limithron is indeed obsessed with all things nautical, and we are so stoked to be using his stuff, for sure. So the six of you climb the side of the vet, stand on the main deck of the, of the, uh, of the port in the um, From here you can see uh, to, the, to the bow of the vessel, you see that there's a large, there's a large deck that protrudes above and then out to the bow street. And then to the stern, you see that there's a number of levels. There's, there's three levels that kind of rise up with stairs that lead up um, uh, into the stern of the boat. Uh, for most of you, you would, you would, you would realise that this is going to be most of the officers are painted to the stern. You can't help but see that these it's really ornate, very well kept, very well, uh, very well maintained cannons lying on both sides. They, they, they seem to be almost recently cleaned um, and and this ship looks extremely well cared for like how recent I mean because out of everything on the ship I would think either like does it look tarred and the can like the, the, the mass seem tarred and the cannon seem cool and everything like how recent yes right? uh, I'm happy for you to make a perception check okay <laughs> Um, and by the way, I do a rule of two, so that uh, two people can always, you know, help out or do also roll if you if you see what he's doing, want to assist him. I think um, I would probably do that as well. Yep. So uh, by all means, go a, a second person can kind of can kind of say, oh yeah, I see what you're doing. I'll, I'll kind of I'll kind of be rubbing the masks. Here. Yeah. Um, go go yes, look. Within a week. Within a week. And and oh. and, the, and the and the cannons boiled within. A, like this is this is proper maintenance regime stuff. And Zan, Zantir, Zantir, Zantir. You stated that these pelican nests are weeks, right? Yeah, and I would recognize that you are kind of checking out, you know, the the, the soil, you know, in the the canyons and whatnot. And I would, you know, just kind of gesture up to the pelican nest, just kind of, you know, indicating. At least that has been neglected, if not the rest of the ship. Something is fishy here. As, as you point up towards this pelican, <laughs> you see that the, the large brown pelican kind of takes off went from the crow's nest and starts to circle around the mast. And then it starts to careen as if it's leaning too much. You see that its head starts to almost loll while it's in midair. And it starts to kind of come screaming down towards the deck before you. Uh, can I please get everyone to make a wisdom, uh, sorry, a dexterity saving throw? Dexterity saving throw. As this pelican coming at full speed seems to be screaming towards you all. I do say, this is a beautiful, what the God's name is that? <laughs> I knew this is how it would end for me. <laughs> pelican, um... death by pelican. Yeah, my, my screen went black. Give me a second. Sorry, we're in the first time using Foundry. How do I do saving throws? So if you... Like, <laughs> we all had that answer ready. 
Uh, select your token. Uh, you'll see a, a yeah. bar pop up on the top left. And if you uh, okay. click under saving throws, it'll give you that option. Okay. Uh, saves and ability checks. Right there. Save. Mm. Normal. Okay. What's the highest? Oh no, Norman did. did uh, sorry, one from Norman. Okay, wait one uh, second. Okay. I am about to do mine. If things okay. would stop doing. Okay. Uh, is it Dex? Dexterity yes, saving throw. Yeah. Yep. The dexterity to avoid hurtling. Uh, according to the place handbook. Uh, that's a good okay. one. Um. So, uh, it, almost comically, uh, most of you see it. this uh, see this pelican kind of plummet um, and start careening towards the deck, um, and everyone ducks except Yella, being eight foot tall. Uh, this pelican kind of spawns him directly in the head, and, and kind of he, he kind of lurches to the ground himself. Uh, you take four hit points worth of damage from pelican to the face, Yella, um, and. Uh, the pelican itself kind of careens off like with a and kind of stumbles across the deck and then then just appears lifeless on, on the ground like it's it's almost like it's it's just died midair and come tumbling is that normal no <laughs> um, is there no. rigging to climb up to its nest like if oh, it's yes. in one of the crow's nests there is okay yes yes there is there's rigging above yeah, I, I would like to start climbing up to that crow's nest. Or uh, pelican's yeah. nest, I guess, now. That is fantastic. So, uh, what I'll get you to do on the map, can you see that there is a mark uh, to the south mm -hmm. of you? Yeah. So, if you want to move your token right adjacent to that mark. And uh, then, what, then what I'll get you to do is an acrobatics or an athlete. To just start as, as, climbing. as I see her begin to do that, I'm going to go ahead and quickly give her some guidance. <laughs> Can I, I just want to, can I position Norman? So where's the pelican at on the ship? Rough, uh, relative to the mast? Uh, relatively, it'll be, uh... Oh, I, I chopped that pelican in half, by the way, sorry. Uh, uh, look, I, look, to be fair, I would say, uh, for you, Norman, it's probably just on the other side to you. I'm going to d gingerly rotate around it here, and just want to be, <sighs> I want to be kind of close to the mast she's climbing, <clears throat> watching her climb, but then I also keep, I'm going to draw the pistol and keep it kind of ready and aimed at the pelican on the ground. Oh, I, I, I run over to the pelican and try to jump. Fair enough. Uh, you see... Hang on a minute. Let, let... I just shake my head after he chops it in half. <laughs> Sorry. It's new to me. Uh, Lafaria, can you see, it has a little, a little icon. Uh, it looks like a little white hanging sign up here right next to your character. Um, do you look like a little oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That would, is, you mind, would you mind clicking that for me and, and this is a beautiful thing about oh my god really bad. It's, uh, it teleports you to the top of the mark fantastic um, you see uh, Lafaria like with <laughs> I love this an acrobatic right. way just kind of tumbles her way up you know it's kind of one hand after the other uh, this is this is what you this is what you do and within seconds you're at the top of the at the same time, Norman and Galrock kind of crowd around this pelican and it's dead on. Uh, Galrock stumbles towards this, uh, towards this, uh, this dead seabird. Um, but Norman, as you approach it, you, you notice that this bird has no wounds, but you suddenly see something kind of pulsing within its neck. Firebolt. There's, there's something within it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as, as my axe is bringing down, your firebolt. Yeah, I just pull the pistol out, and then uh, rather than like pull the trigger, like pull the uh, pull the the thing out of, I can't even think of the uh, the hammer off the back, and then release okay. it, and then cast firebolt through the pistol. No worries. So uh, with a with a simultaneous both explosion and <laughs> the fire kind of erupts and, and and singes the feathers of this pelican as the head is severed. Uh, and you hear, I wouldn't call it squealing, but you hear a chittering sound. Um, and on fire, a large green beetle, about two inches long, kind of 
squirms out of the neck of this pelican and expires on the other. At least it I wasn't fire... a centipede. I firebolted again. I cleave sure. it as well. I cleave it. <laughs> So there's 12 <laughs> in a burn. Uh, there is now this kind of ashen, ashen uh, kind of a blackened husk of what, what was a very large beak. Um, on top of the main mast, you see that as you arrive, uh, Latharia, just as you enter the, the, the top of this mast, uh -oh. you get this, you get this, this huge swarm of what seems to be dragonflies, just vroom, this kind of emerge as you as you as you enter that have been kind of maybe attached to the bottom of this crow's nest um and it it, it does kind of disorient you to begin with um i'll get you to make a wisdom saving throw oh we're going indiana jones right now no you shake your head as, as disoriented kind of feeling of this swarm around it, it you know, you, you kind of take a second, put an extra hand, remember the, the three-point rule of having two feet and a hand next to something, and kind of shake this off, and then manage to pull yourself up into the crow's nest. Uh, on top of this crow's nest, you see that there is a foretop. You see that uh, there is a nest that seems to be made of paper, as if it been, as if the pelican has found books, tomes, bits and pieces, and there are four relatively large pelican eggs within this, within this nest. Okay. Uh, I'm I don't know what's happened to the pelican that, that tried to dive bomb us, so I'm just going to yell down. Hey guys, there's four eggs! You just hear an explosion of fire and cleaving <laughs> underneath. <laughs> and a, a die, pelican, die! <laughs> Oh, we cleaved it. I um. All, all, all things that I'm, I'm very used to happening. Yeah. As as you hear that, I'll yell back up to you. Do you see the other one? Oh yeah, can I see the other nest? Uh, so the other nest is right at the bow, called the bow. So the bow spread is the, the very the very. Mm -hmm. So you see that there's the large kind of plank out. Yes, you can see it from here, uh, and and there is a, a brown pelican that's kind of preening itself uh, on the bow. Uh, you do notice that it, it's seemingly chasing what looks to be a beetle around, trying to kind of grab it with a with its with its beak as it as it as it sits in this nest. So you do get a sense that there's more of these beetles around. around it. Okay, I'm gonna. And I like bugs, so I'm gonna immediately just like make sure that there aren't any anything skittering around in, in the nest other than the dragonflies that were happening. No, dragonflies have gone. All we see is these four eggs. Four flutters. Okay. Uh. Do you relay to us about the beetles? Or... I mean. I'm not gonna scream at you from up here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pocket one of the eggs and I'm gonna climb back down and then tell you about the beetle. Uh, the second that you touch an egg, um, oh. I'll get you to make a dexterity check for me. Just a check? a check. An ability check. Yeah. Okay. That's never good. <laughs> Please don't fall. Swarm of beetles. Ah, How long does guidance last? I know, but I haven't used it. It's the first skill check that you use after. You didn't, didn't need it. Yeah. Alright, well, there's that. Um, look, you are very, you are, you are very dex. Oh, it's a choice. So, I was gonna say, dex, dex should be plus 10, not plus 4. Uh, for an ability check. Yeah. Plus 10? Yeah. I'm dexterous. For a level 6? <laughs> It's just your straight deck, so, so just it's yeah, it's just your, just your, yeah, yeah, yeah not oh, that just, okay, yeah. You can use guided, my bad, right? You, you can use guided right now if you want to. You choose one. Uh, either way, either way, if you, you, you've succeeded, okay. Yeah, so, um, I, I guess, I guess if your background was that uh, was chicken farmer, then you get proficiency bonus to the egg and chicks, but in this is <laughs> uh, and this is this is an unusual thing, so you, you, you just touch the egg and you, you feel 
this shell is absolutely capable. This is not a, a proper egg. You feel like any pressure at all will just collapse the shell. Ooh, okay. That means it's either fresh or it's not viable. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, well then, in that case, I'm just gonna try and chuck them into the ocean. Chuck, chuck the <laughs> eggs into the ocean? Yeah. Sure. Uh, from, from down below, you see uh, a just get thrown over from the crow's nest and... Is there anything up there? Oh! Into, into the water. <laughs> Very cool! Now take that! Wait, why, are you... Yell out. why are you tossing young Egg. pelican... unborn pelicans into the ocean? Pelican fetuses. The mama pelican tried to kill you, so I think it's a fair... You know... tit, tit for tat, as we say. There, right. There's no re there's no reason but for the young to be for the mother. Alright, well that's all happening. Uh, if there's, is there anything else in the nest? That's all you see in the nest. That's, that's it? Okay. Cool. What, what, what is the nest made out of? Uh, paper. It looks like old, kind of old, yeah. torn, and sheaths of paper. The, the, the paper itself is weathered. Mm -hmm. You can't read any writing, it's kind of been destroyed. But this okay. looks like they've been, as if book pages have been ripped out from the large paper and created. Alright. Well, if I can't read it, then I'm just going to climb back down. No worries. Just click that little banner and hopefully it'll send you back to the deck. So in this, put, at this moment, uh, <laughs> at this moment, what is Yella, Nasima, and Zantikir doing? As these guys have been destroying uh, local wildlife and, and you know, kind of hurling eggs off the... Off the uh, Actually, right as she is throwing eggs off of the ship, I'm quickly making my way to the front of the ship where the other nest is supposed to be because yep. as the fur blog I can vaguely talk to animals so I'm trying to get there before anyone else does so that maybe I can have a conversation with the creature before we're forced to kill it or it does the same dive bomb break neck and die <laughs> sure uh, hopefully you can see brown pelican on the map now to your north So uh, okay. you see, you see this, uh, you see this, yes, yeah, just, just you know, um, you, sh you see this brown pelican, like I say, just kind of trying to grab this green beetle at the side. And using, um, alright, sign in the actual. There we go. Okay. What do you say to the, uh, to the pelican? How does this sound uh, pass it, and what do you say to it? Uh, this would look somewhat strange because Yeller himself is quite the serious looking person, but this would probably be a combination of awkward bird-like movements and pelican noises. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. No, I'm not no. I'm we right we now. need pelican noises. I'm sorry. I'm not doing pelican noises. Okay, I, I have remains. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Anyways, I that's that's what it looks like pretty much, and it's pretty much uh, a greeting. And a, have you seen any other people like us recently? Recently, you watch this pelican put one eye up. As if to, as if it's looking at you, and then it's almost like a, a, almost like a matrix moment, really, where it just kind of, and then just reverts back to what it was doing, and you see that it, it kind of, it just continues to try and bite at this, at this beetle. I have a very, just like that's a very strange thing to happen. I'm, most creatures don't ignore me when they figure out I can talk to them. I turn back and uh, yell to our lovely half elf, half halfling. Uh, did do you see the pelican over here doing anything strange, or do you know why what it's pecking at? Yeah, there's like this big beetle thing. Kill the beetle! 
came out of its head. What? I, what? I what? concur. It kind of burst out of its neck like a... Well, it was gonna burst, but then... then we, we killed it. it. So, but wait. it was really weird and freaky. <clears throat> but, like, how, how do you know it wasn't already... It was the, that pelican wasn't trying to eat it. I was gonna say, what if what if that's why the pelican fellow was choking on beetle? Maybe. Well, it's all fine and good, but we don't ask questions when things start bursting out of things' necks. Well, pelicans we learned that. usually like you know a ton of fish at once, so this was weird. He has a fair point. They do normally sort of swallow fish whole that are much bigger than that beetle. Fair enough. It was actually yeah. pretty gruesome and terrifying, if I'm being honest. It was the one that chopped it in half. <laughs> yeah. The nest seemed to be made out of paper, which is an odd choice, but there you go. Hey, no, I couldn't, I couldn't read any of it. Yeah, but... you continue to see that this, this pelican continues to kind of try and bite at this, at this beetle, but it's almost done on loop. It feels like it's a loop. It feels like it's doing it over and over again. Oh, sorry. He's good. Can you try and swap the beetle out of the nest? See what it does? Uh, are you guys need to do this? You're the tallest one here. Who could probably I reach can sit. Would, I would like me to send Sigil up there to go to go <laughs> sit and investigate the beetle. beetle? Uh, yes. The the beetle and the, the, they're flying around. No, no, it's just kind of crawling around its nest. It's probably uh, yeah, I, nest and kind I'm, of lurching out of it. I'm, I'm, I'm flattered that you know that's how tall I am, but that's a mast. And I'm here on the oh, ship I thought... deck. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm not that tall. I thought it was below you. I'll, I'll come uh, over and I'll try to lift you up on my shoulders. Together we will be the tallest thing these islands have ever seen. You're lifting uh, the giant. Really <laughs> I appreciate uh, that you didn't just offer to like try to throw me. Oh, you're right. I could just throw you. I'm <laughs> happy. Can we not throw our party members, please? All right. Please, no. You, want to get uh, you could get climb the mast. Uh, it's up to you. But, uh, um, there is no way that the two of you, even on each other's shoulders, can reach. You try. It's comical. But... You? I just shake my head and start walking towards the aft end of the ship. I'm just going to start looking around the <laughs> direction that these guys haven't really gone yet. Oh, you're right. You'll, we'll, we'll get on your shoulders, then we'll definitely be tall enough. That's... Just, just let. Let our let our lovely, skill skillful climber climb because she was she she went up the other one very quickly, very deftly. I mean, I can climb, but you're right. She's that's right. Is it this mass at the front? Uh, the the bowsprit right at the front. Can you see the okay? Right at the right. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It, it, it comes off the front, and then there's like sails below it. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want right to right at the bow, right along the sprit, there's another slight mast, so it's right uh, out there. So that, that's that's what we're doing. I'm climbing and climbing again. I hope you will. I mean, I don't <laughs> think you would enjoy being chucked as much as the joke is fun. <laughs> no. I'll stand at the base, and if you fall, I'll catch you. It's quite simple. So we'll do another athletics or acrobatics. I don't think she you. she trusts you that way. And, and, and just just in case to keep you safe once more, I will go ahead and, and give and you. Some you've guidance. walked up the stairs to the uh, to the quarter deck. Is that right? While, while these guys are doing this, uh, it's true. And then uh, when I kind of get to the right where I am, I'm just going to kind of looking, you know, down these stairs that seem to be here, and just kind of seeing if I can hear anything that seems to be out of out of sorts. Sure. Uh, again, no problem with the athletics rock. So you're, you're able to climb out onto the bowsprit. And to be fair, it is quite busy. You know, you, you're kind of looking down at the ocean and then you climb up uh, okay. the two-story climb up to the small up to the small mast right at the bow. Before I get all the way up there, do I see the same dragonflies hanging out underneath it that, like, freaked me uh, out before? No, not that you see. Uh, mm -hmm. Can't see those dragon. Uh, sorry, you are actually out here. That's where we're talking about. All right. All right. So I'll get you to click that mast, and we'll get to the spot and get to the top. Actually, can I tie a rope to her first? Just kind of. 
It's not necessary. I've got it. I've got uh, preparations in case she falls. Uh, oh, you want to pull her? You want to pull her back? Well, she's out over the ocean. Like she, like this. So it's just like if anything happens, she kind of like fall right into the ocean. Well, we're not moving. Okay. Just gotta trust your rogue. You can. You can. Uh, what you see when you get up there is there doesn't seem to be a pelican. So in the moment that you've you've arrived up the mast, this mm -hmm. pelican seems to have absolutely just vanished. Is there still a beetle? No. You just see that there's this nest. This nest is not made out of paper. Okay. Do you have twigs and wood? And okay, so immediately I'm gonna yell, guys. There's no pelican here. That would be to me to look for a pelican. <laughs> Do we I still see a pelican? Uh, looking up now, no. This, this thing, it's, it's, as if, as, it's almost like a different scene. As if, as if something has changed within, within the whole, you kind of look down, you look up. The mask, the, the crow's nest looks slightly different. The nest looks different, and of course, you may have your, your road up the top. So, so, but if there is no pelican, no bird, it is surreal. Okay. At the okay. same time, uh, the dread Xantia looks down those stairs uh, that, would, that would go right down to the lower. Um, and I'll get you to make a perception check for me as you kind of peer. Yes, sir. What have I done? What did I do, guys? I believe you committed the first cardinal sin, which is investigate anything. <laughs> well, I don't what see whatever it is. So. <laughs> what we see is, is, is extremely gloomy down below. There's absolutely there's very little light down here. You do see a, a faint, bluish, pale glow, but it's extremely gloomy, so it's very dark. So it, it's you would expect, I guess, there to be some level of sunlight coming through here. You'd expect um, some kind of lighting source, but this looks almost mist-like at the bottom of the stairs. I can see up to 120 feet, even in magical darkness, perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. So what you do see directly below this would be some hammocks within it, so you would assume that this would be where the crew would be walking, but from that angle, all you see is this faint bluish light okay. of blue with some hammocks below. Okay. After noting that, I'm going to make my way up onto the uh, the quarter deck and just have a look around up there. Uh, under the poop deck, right at the back? Oh, the quarter deck. Oh, uh, show, the... show me where you, where you be moving. Uh, well, this is the quarter deck here, right? I, th oh, I yeah, assumed yeah. you meant I was looking down from, you know, down over here. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I thought you were looking up, looking down from there. Oh, oh okay. Right. No, that's... You see a couple of hammocks. You see some gloomy... Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I would uh, continue moving my way back uh, towards the back of the ship, I guess. I just want to make sure the deck is kind of clear other than this pelican situation. Are you, are you being stealthy at all? Are you trying to... I mean, if it looks empty, I don't really see that I would be trying to be stealthy necessarily. Um, I'll get you... Uh, when you arrive to the stairs towards the arc, you see that above... The above the stairs, you would you would see that there's uh, there's the tiller, uh, sorry, the um, call it the helm, where the large wheel kind of stands. Sure. And then beyond the helm, strung between the lines that would then uh, that would go to the stern from the main mast, you see that there is a body. It looks to be the body of a sailor strung out from both arms, its wrists bound to the lines that stir the ship, head down and unmoving. Well, I've just discovered something, haven't I? Um, okay, that's interesting. Can I get you to make a quick perception check? Yes. What's the range on prestidigitation? 30 feet? Gonna clean up the dead body a little bit? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Touch up Sorry, his hair. 
Just to uh, yeah, make him smell like sunshine and roses. You know, I mean. uh, from below, so from the face is shadowed from the sun behind. But what you do see is this face is there is movement underneath it, and you do see beetles starting to kind of come out of its mouth. You see that one of the beetles pops out of its cheek and kind of runs through. These these are kind of like a good kind of you know inch inch wide diameter scarab beetles that seem to kind of form out of this, this, this sailor's uh, face. I've seen the mummy. This doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am definitely going to start uh, stepping backwards. Uh, can uh, hmm. so it's tied up like mm -hmm. strung up like by the arms and the legs or just the arms just the arms yep. just the arms strung to both lines and come head down um, escaping from the I'm going to try and step back a few feet if they like advance towards me I'm going to step back further but I'm going to try no, and cast I'm sorry go ahead no, no, no. The beetles don't seem to be coming towards its chest, yeah? So it, it's, it's effectively, it's become a house for the Okay. Um, I'm going to cast Mage Hand and see if I can work out the, the knots that are supporting this body and untie them from a distance. Sure, yep. Uh, you... From, from where you look and you, and you start to, to manipulate the space around it, it, it does look like these have not been tied. It looks as though the, the rope itself has been, uh, what, what is the word when you, when you join two word, uh, two ropes together, when you plait them together? Like, like, like spliced it? Spliced together, yeah, into a wrist hole around, around, the, uh, around the arms. So as if something has kind of gone out and just done that. You know, as if the rope itself is rasped rather than anything tight. Uh, that's weird. Um, okay. I am going to, uh... I'm going to walk back towards the, um, the bow of the ship until I get, uh... All of my party members are all the way at the other end of the ship. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I was saying, Nasima's going to come and take, in look, take a look and see what you were up to. Oh, there you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to turn, and uh, as soon as I see Nasima, I'm going to cast a prestidigitation to kind of, like, just cause, a, like, a minor tremor uh, near her, mm -hmm. just enough of a vibration to get her attention. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, at you, you get a sense of the, 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 the ground, the deck below you is starting to slightly rumble. Just as you, so you look around, and mm -hmm. yes, there he is on top of the stairs. Okay. Um, I just kind of point to my eyes and then point back over my shoulders. Do I see the, the beetles coming out of... Do I see the body? Uh, you'll see the body, absolutely. You have to get okay. it closer really to see the beetles. It wasn't until you... The stairs and we'll get a bit closer to yeah. What? What? I can't do the accent now. What is going on with that? What's going on with that body? What is. Are these beetles? Do not get close. I wasn't planning on it. Uh. Mm, we need I... fire. Uh, well, I don't have fire. I have air, but that's not it. I kind of look back in uh, Norman's direction. Um, you could kind of tell that even just talking about fire, he seemed to be kind of uncomfortable. And you've probably noticed in the past that any time that he's been around an open flame or anything like that, he's kind of seemed to avoid it. Would you like me to get Norman? I just kind of yell. <laughs> Norman! I'm not actually going to yell because it's, it's very echoey in here. Well, that's all the pelicans are goddamn gone. No, Norman, I think they're calling you. I yell again, Norman! Okay, well, 
let's uh all right uh i think we should kind of make sure leferi is coming down the mast at this point I oh don't... i thought I, I thought she was ow don't want to leave her up there dangling this morning don't worry oh boy <sighs> here i'll catch you trust me <laughs> are you leaping into or, or just climbing down um, the plan was to climb down but so be hurt I, 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 I feel like you should <laughs> climb down and just pat him on his head <laughs> yeah, I'll, wait, I'll wait until I'm just above his head and then I'll, I'll drop down can I make a check to see if this is enough of a trust ball to <laughs> Uh, yeah, make an inside check, of course. <laughs> of course. Trust fall. Yay! Yay! Wee! We're a team. Oh. Uh, uh, it's either, and then a wisdom. No, uh, yes. Uh, Can we get a wisdom scene from the referee? <laughs> absolutely implicitly. If she made this, she's not and you her. Her. Well, this would hurt her, so I do trust that she's. Yes. Yes. Okay. This could. It could. Yeah, this is a deadly jump. This is a deadly leap. So, you know. That five feet. <laughs> well, no. Galrock's over, you said over six feet? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm barely over four foot. Nothing. I'm like so, jumping twice my height here. So, so I'd like an, I'd like an acrobatics check, uh, followed by an athletics check from, uh, Galrock to see if you can actually catch this first thing. Acrobatics right. and athletics? Uh, no, athletics for you, acrobatics for her. Okay. <laughs> Netro one. I, 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 try, I try to let go of the rope, but my foot gets caught. No, that's not how you drop. <laughs> can I? Can I like dive and like take damage? Uh, uh, these guys are swimming. You, Come on. You, you, see, you see Lafaria just kind of swan dive out with a kind of catch me dad kind yeah. of kind of <laughs> as, as, as as her as her right foot catches the crow's nest, and then with a look of wide eyed horror, as you realise she's not going to even make the side of the boat, uh, she just turtles her way and is looking like she's going about to hit the ocean itself. Um, right back, sorry. You you go to leap to kind of catch her, but yeah. she's she's cleared your your grasp and she's going to hit the water hard. Does anyone want to do anything quickly before? Do I have time? I will do you're, you're not. Uh, you're not. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, will to be fair, this is probably a yellow. You're like sixty I, feet away. I think I think you guys are way too. Can't far away. levitate. Can't. I, I thought it was. I have I have levitate as well. Is that? But it's an action. Can we get that spell off in time? Yeah, I'm happy that, that you could you can save your friend if you want to quickly. Throw yeah, a little I'll uh, burn a level two spell slot <laughs> and cast levitate it seems entirely while I'll allow it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> yeah, so quick. So I, I, I was ready just to use Featherfall, which is a level one reaction spell, but that's okay. Uh, he uh, Norman quickly takes his cane and twists it and turns it, and you see like these like intricate levels of like just a bending, and then like he throws it, and then the wings pop out. And it flies and kind of flies straight to Lefaria as she's falling. Uh, so you have levitate for 10 minutes, and I'm concentrating on it. So you can move 20 feet up or down. I think you stop instantly falling. Yeah, so and just as the moment kind of is about to plummet to her doom and the head just about to hit the water, you, she entirely freezes, and you just get this soft wave that just kind of into the side of your head. You get, you get a... Uh, you get a a mouthful of seawater, but you're alive. Um, what do you do? You're, you're kind we, of stuck there. You, you... I, I can see her just like kind of there. Can I swing? Can I swing on the line and just grab her? Like... I push you from another spell slot? Where's a rope? Swim through the air up back onto the boat. So it takes a moment, but you realize hang on. <laughs> And do this, then you kind of get that sense of, of swimming up, up and, and, and land on and land on the boat. You can swim through the air. Why have you never done this before? <laughs> this is a me. I mean, well, it's well, pretty cool, but like, I'm not doing this. I just shake my head at the back of the boat. Uh, Zantia, like, invoke to make perception checks, please. 
I just start doing like all the random like you know like different different ways patterns of, of swimming. <laughs> Did you say me? Yes, Zentia and the Sima, please. Okay. What is why is my Perception thing not working? Check. Yeah, okay, uh let me nope. I, I can't pull the, the, the bar up so I have to go through the line. It wasn't a natural sheet. Perception. That critical miss sound effect like happened before the world showed up. <laughs> <laughs> we, all, we all knew it was coming. Um uh Nasima, you hear the door opening behind Xantia and it uh, and it closed very quickly as if it was right up the back <laughs> wait what happened I didn't see this you, you heard a door you heard a door closing the scene has heard the sound of the door opening uh, she kind of turns and uh, looks for which door it was uh, so it sounded like it was on top of the stairs, above the stairs. Where, so Zent, you see how Zentia is on the bottom of the stairs right now? So mm -hmm. it's the stairs behind him. So, like, right here? Can, I can't do anything. Why can't I do anything? Did you hold it? You, gotta hold you just got to hold it. Yeah. So just behind it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I kind of, like, look at Zentia and <laughs> kind of just, like, point towards the top of the stairs. I'm like, there was a, sa a a door closed. Up there. I heard it. We are not alone. I don't think so. Um, As you say that, you see a figure emerge from on top of that boot deck. He has, uh, he has quite tussled grey hair, very unkempt he, he, he looks maybe in his late fifties. He he uh, is wearing sailor's clothes uh, that seem to be worn and quite bedraggled. And he staggers out onto the onto the balustrade that looks down from the poop deck, and he kind of bellows, "You swabs! What I employ you for? Come now, let's get underway." I kind of just like look at Zetia. I'm like, if it's okay with that, I'd like to just have a short break. You Absolutely, <laughs> with this crazy, whatever he is, pirate guy coming out to threaten my face, I'm just going to blast him. That's all there is to it. I don't care if he's good or bad. I'm shooting him, and that's all there is to it. But we'll figure out what happens next, right here on Kronos World. Here in just a second, please. Uh, we'll be back here in a, just a couple of minutes. So please grab a drink or use the restroom, any of that kind of stuff, and we'll be right back. All right. Looks like we are loading back in. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for your patience. It looks like we are back in. Uh, we are going to be picking right back up uh, where we left off. So there's like this gray bearded uh, bad boy going on on the top of the stairs here. Uh, yes, absolutely. So the door slams shut behind this kind of 50 year old bedraggled looking captain i guess a sea captain he kind of he kind of looks down towards the two of you and kind of bellows says, why are we not underway the ship i can feel it who are you i'm the captain what do you mean who am i um, i'm sorry Make to hurt you so parasites take us more so you're not my captain this ship is a, uh, was abandoned when we found it does he look uh, like a normal dude? Just a normal uh, human? Make, or? Make, uh, make a perception check. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm also going to do that. She's got to love how she's giving attitude to the possible ghost. <laughs> <laughs> or zombie. Very possible. Or zombie. Whatever. Or zombie. Uh, what's that? Is Could that a be a pirate lich. Who knows what the fuck is going oh, on here? Let's just not be possible undead. 
It's freaking Davy Jones, and he's gonna go. Ah! Uh, yes, this looks like a normal dude. I mean, he looks old. He looks tan. He looks bedraggled. But yes, you do notice that he. That, that now that you now that you kind of look even closer, there seems to be some kind of almost like a lightning bolt like scar on the side of his face. Have you been hit recently? In the head. I've given you order. Come you now. ain't my captain. We must make way. No. The parasites are upon us. The parasites itself eating the ship alive. We must make way. What's parasite? You mean it? parasites? You can't see them. I look. I see a ship and a crazy old white dude. The Beatles. The, the Beatles? Are you talking about the Beatles? The Beatles? Uh, the eels. Those foul creatures. The things below. They're consuming her. Consuming who? What? The mutable lady. The benefic Shogoth. Can you take us to her? I, I. You'll come with me. You'll remove the parasites, I. Uh, we're not exterminate exterminators, but. Well, you'll you follow my orders. I'm your captain. You'll do what you're, you're told. Not, first of all, mutiny. Not my... I mean, I'm not your captain. Sir, if you will let me explain. Do we do we hear this yelling? Oh yeah. <laughs> we're like catching, like we're kind of catching La Lafaris, like coming down, like all right, easy, little, little left. <laughs> I have Lafair like, uh, like in my arm, and then I just start running with her floating above me. Back there. I'm a balloon. <laughs> yeah, you can Stop. Out if you want to, what? What did they do? You got uh, what? So, I will not have this kind of behavior. You're ridiculous. You get to work. Get to work. And if let what? us speak. You want to make oh, an intimidation shit, check, please? <coughs> I'm sorry, something just fell off my table. No, stop. Excuse me. I'd like an intimidation roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just half a second away from blasting this dude, so. <laughs> hey, prepare to drag yourself down to I can't. I keep trying, but it keeps saying. Push, like, push, push the door oh. first. Oh, you gotta push the door first. Yeah. Back. You, have, you have to actually go through walls and walkways and boundary. I'm, I am clicking the doors and it's not bringing me anywhere. Well, it was nice knowing you. Down to <laughs> five. Uh, Bye. <laughs> <laughs> the ship has her oh, now. I got you. Thank you. You belong, you belong to the pool veneer now. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, no. <laughs> um, You're married to that other... Uh, <laughs> bird, bird. bird. <laughs> so, um, what it was? Uh, how did that oh, intimidation yeah. roll go? Intimidation. Oh, okay. Okay. And he has shut up. <laughs> you kind of shut up, and he's like, mm. he's looking stern. He's you can see that he's he's getting flushed in the face as as some crew crew uh, person is just have the audacity to yell at him. He's he's coming up with, a, you can get a sense he's coming up with expletives. You know, he's kind of furiously glaring at you. Okay. As I was saying, we are not from this ship. We, this ship was found abandoned weeks ago, month, a month ago. We are here exploring, finding the, the, the cargo that was aboard the ship to give it back to Lady... But of course this is not my ship. This is a Pavina. I'm from the Manzel. What are you talking about? The what? The yeah. <laughs> do, uh, do, do any of us who are now within range to hear this have any clue what the Manzel means? The Manzo, M-A-N-Z-O. M -A -N -Z -O. I'll get uh, two people who might be good at history to... Uh... I will... Do a history check. Not me. I'm not proficient, but I have plus three. Is that enough? Or it's better than me. It's better than my minus one. It's better than my minus one. 
I'd postpone that till then. No one, you've heard of the Manzo. You've heard it's a, it's a like a, a, an exploration ship, like a ship of discovery. It's a, it's it's kind of like a scientific vessel. You're not, not merchant or anything like that. This is it's something entirely different. Well, so, of hang course. on. He, he just, he said he was the captain of this ship, but then as soon as he was questioned, he said he was not the captain of the ship, he was the captain of another ship? I he believe thinks he's on that He thinks ship. he's on the other ship. I'm not on that other ship. This is a po- We boarded! You're part of my crew! We've got a Santa! Yeah. Hey, 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 guys, guys, guys. Play well, along. Play along. <laughs> Wait, are we huddling? No, no, no huddle. Just I play along. Oh, well, they're I huddling. It's very hard to grab hold into the huddle. Okay. Hi, hi, we are, we are your crew. Tell us, tell us, uh, uh, we have the parasites, I believe you mentioned. As hi. the others come closer, I hold up my hand to get their attention, and then I point to the guy that's strung up behind um, the ship's wheel. Uh, with all the beetles crawling all over him. Oh. Did you do that? No. Did you what? Uh, that guy. Ah, <laughs> uh, parasites! I warned you! I warned you! Parasites everywhere! The Sahagwin! The eels! They're trying to feast on their body. They're trying to take her very thing. I, I, beetles, not eels, right? Everybody, those are beetles, right? Okay, yes, I, once again, I'll put a hand on top of uh, Godrog. Just play along. As I, like, I'm squeezing his shoulder. Play along. God, <laughs> my mother always said... <laughs> no. Doc talks about eels. Alright, uh... I don't, yeah, don't. Eels, exactly like beetles. You must uh, help me. Is it? You must help me. You must get rid of all... Can you get rid of them? Anything that eats her. Anything. Um, we must we must preserve her. Most most beautiful. Most beautiful. Nasima will turn to Norman. She's like, Can you put fire on that? Uh, of course, <laughs> my lady, uh, I can put put fire on anything. No, 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 no. I think Firebolt. I, think I this can thing think is of like roped up to like, yep. Well, fire and ship equals that. <laughs> Don't do that. My boy, I just it's, it's the mere firebolt. It can't do any damage to the ship. It can absolutely uh, burn down the entire ship. <laughs> um, I, I just meant just to the beetles, not the whole body. Captain, uh, if one moment, I'm I will I'm gonna like turn and like walk past him, and I will uh, I want to pull out the uh, the cane and again start to like configure it, and I want to cast the uh, tech. At first level, but he's okay. up at uh, the top of this here in the aft castle. Oh, do you not see? No, we don't see him. No, we don't see him. I see him. Uh, I see him. What? Where? Yeah. Oh, he's back here. He's at the, like, the oh, very oh, back oh, of the ship. So oh, he's okay. like two levels above where we are. Oh, oh okay. but that, that, sorry, that that's not correct. You were right. He should be here. Sorry, that's okay. bad. That's he's, still he's above the, the stairs from a, where we are. He has emerged from the door behind him. See that. Okay. Yeah. Can we get, or is it possible to get up these stairs and get past these uh, beetles, or are they like on the stairs themselves, or are they just? Oh no, they're they uh, they're still above. They're they're crawling all over this guy's face. This they're, they're above him, so literally directly above where he is. is uh, where these, these oh, are. up above where the captain is. Yeah. Oh, I thought you so meant he was like right behind the wheel and tied up where no, that no, little... No, 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 like literally suspended in the air from the lines that go up to the mast. So he's right oh. above that, hanging in the air. Sorry, my bad. No, that's fine. Can I try <laughs> and... I'm sorry, what were you going to say, Norman? No, I was... I At some point, I'd like to cast Detect Magic. I can either do yeah. it ritually if we have time, but I can, I'm happy to use a spell slot. But I was, gonna, I was actually just going to ask, does this guy look like the guy hanging that we're are we seeing? Like... Uh, no, 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 no okay. not at all. Well, the, no, no, the other guy looks, uh, to be honest, it's hard to tell his features. Yeah, he's got beards. Yeah, yeah. But, but in terms of body shape and, and tan, this doesn't look like the same person. Okay. Is, so the lines are actually the rigging? Correct. 
and they've somehow like right. just morphed right. and clawed uh, into his his yeah, his yeah, arms. Yeah, let me explain. If we've, if we've got two two lines that are going up to the mast like this, uh -huh. he is suspended by ropes that look like that. So there's another set oh, of ropes that come off the lines around his wrists. Oh, well, I'm going to try both, and... and and everything looks splay uh, spliced. So it doesn't look like the ropes are tied to the ropes, and it doesn't look like the ropes are tied to his wrist. It looks like it's all part of one rope. Okay. The rope is actually going into his wrist. Like it's not uh, it does look like it's woven around his wrist. Oh, it's not. Yeah, yeah. I'm but not tied as in a, a knot. It looks like it's a, it's a perfect loop around his wrist. Oh, okay, okay. I'm going to try and see if I can blast the ropes that are coming down from the actual rigging that are attached to his wrist with uh, yeah. an Eldritch Blast. Sure, that, I mean, that's that's easy enough to do. You kind of look back and you want to describe your Eldritch Blast. Um, so I do, and then... <clears throat> And I'm going to do something right after that as well, too. Um, so I kind of uh, am studying this body kind of up in the air. And um, you guys would all see um, almost like electricity start crackling around the edges uh, and around um, this, this metallic uh, skull-like helm that's on me. Um, and then all of a sudden it would just like kind of collect around my eyes. And then you see these pulse bolts kind of... Uh, jet out of my eyes and you see him just kind of pew pew um, out of my eye sockets as uh, they kind of snap through uh, the ropes from this guy as he starts falling I suddenly reach out with my hand and you see him just kind of uh, just get stopped for a second in midair and just thrust like over the side of the boat into the water as you have the pushing blast thingy as I have the uh, telekinetic feet. Cool. It's kind of a, well, a combination of... Where's parasites gone? Uh, you see a stream of, of beetles that are kind of caught up with his movement. So uh, a few of them are dispersed into the air and they kind of fly, but the majority of them seem to be spilling out and they too end up on the, uh, over the overboard um, past the stern catapults the body overboard. Yeah, and then I'll speak up to the captain and you lead on, captain. Let us purge the vessel of the... Aye. Vermin. Grand work, grand work. You can be a, you'll be of most great assistance. We must purge. Uh, now, for Norman, for Norman, you uh, cast your detect magic as you're doing this. You kind of, you know, I'll you, I'll, we'll, we'll, fast, we'll fast wave the ritual. Uh, and what you do see is the the doors below the captain uh, are glowing blue. Well, now. So uh, right below him, there is actually a set of doors that kind of would lead to probably uh, an aft castle below, um, and they are they're growing they're glowing bright blue. Do I have a sense of what magic might be? Uh, this would be an illusion. Okay. Uh, but just below him. Uh, is he, so I will wait to see if I will like kind of step forward in front of the group and then he, we've asked him to lead on, so I will kind of let this play out for a second. Uh, so the captain kind of walks down and says, All right, crew, let's get this together. Arm yourselves. All sorts of nefarious creatures are below the most benign. The Shogoth, the most benefic Shogoth, must be protected. She is a grand organism. A what? The, the Shogoth, the, the creature we've been tracking. The benefic Shogoth. What I've... Have you heard nothing, lad, over the dinners? Of course, Captain. We mm. know exactly. It's me, your first mate. Of course, we know what's going on. Please, uh, please draw continue. Draw weapons, lads. Draw weapons, lasses. I'm holding my axe. Uh, right? You're looking at me. I'm holding my axe. This yeah. is a fight for her very life. As he says this, I kind of pull my uh, shield off of my back, and in my right hand, you see this darkness start to coalesce. And as it kind of stretches out, you see it kind of start uh, forming into this wicked looking trident. And uh, the tip of it starts glowing with like this reddish kind of an energy. Aye. 
Not in the essence. He's not glowing magically at all. Nope. I said on yourselves! Get through your weapons! Good <laughs> lord! Is Look, no one speak! I, I was I've got McCain! What else do I need? Uh, <laughs> Namisha will, will, will hold her uh, axe of warning. Uh, it's almost almost sprightly, as if he's been reinvigorated. He kind of draws a cutlass and bounds down the stairs. I don't know, like, mentioned to Norman. So did he say he was, like, into this Shorgoth? Like, it, this it, guy it, definitely has a thing for the Shorgoth. Is it, it, that. it did appear that... Uh, he is very enamored with whatever this this thing he's he's talking about. Kalk, those are those doors behind us. They're not real. It, they're an illusion, it appears, or at least affected by illusion magic of some. I sort. go over to the doors and clean them. <laughs> At a boy. Is it possible to roll like a religion or a nature check on this Shorgoth situation? Uh, you can make a nature check, but I'm going to tell you, it's it's a very very high difficulty. <laughs> okay. I'll give it a shot. My mother always did say if there was ever a captain who was in love with a weird sounding creature, he mm -hmm. definitely had to fight over that. <laughs> oh. Can I do an insight check, Captain? Ah, uh, sure. What are you hoping to discover from the captain through your insight? If he's kind of just actually there mentally, not just brainwashed <laughs> yes brainwashed or affected by the parasite sure so evidence of him being under the sway of something yes. uh I, you know, I wouldn't say he's being uh under the sway of anything this this feels to you like you mention this feels like an, an impaired mental faculty as though he's imagining half uh half, um, you know, kind of uh, projecting what might have happened in the past. This, this seems like someone who's uh, undergone a trauma rather than being directly on control. PTSD? <laughs> like, to give a modern version of it? Yep. Yep. Okay. Might be re he might be reliving something. He might be <clears throat> in terms of looking at you and, and seeing other people than you <clears throat> from his past, something like that. Uh, so I, I straight cleaved this door. Uh, <laughs> what, it's a loose area door. So it's quite do, uh, do I explode? At least he's not weeping. Still early in the night. Let's go head first into this door. Like, not even open it, just... Uh, and, it. And, I, and I apologize, I, I may have missed this map up a little bit, sorry. Uh, I was, I'm referring to this door in front of you. This sure. is the illusory door? This door yeah. here? So that, that door in front where I've just placed uh, Further down here, yeah. Norman and Galrock. So <clears throat> my bad. I, okay. the, the, the map, I'm not checking where the link is. All good, man. So, so yeah, I'll cleave, I'll cleave that. If they remember, leaving it. So if there's a door to cleave. <laughs> no, there's an the loose illusion that I will cleave. That's yeah. the way to get through an illusion is to cleave. Uh, make an athletic check for me. This is gonna end swimmingly. Uh, an eighteen, fine. Yeah, you you wind up with with the axe and just slam into this door, and the door effectively shatters uh, uh, in front of you. This was not an illusion, um, but what you do see, Norman, beyond the door, you can kind of you can kind of get a sense of there is magic further into this chamber. So it's kind of like it's it's more distant. Um, what I'll get you guys to do is actually left-click that door for me, for those that are, that are right next to it, and you can enter the chamber next to it. So, Galrock and, uh, and Zampir and Norman can all walk in. Oh, am I blocking the door now? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, just hold up there for a second. <clears throat> okay. Uh, for those that have entered that room, I'll just quickly describe it, and others can choose to follow if you like. Uh, this is a very large central war room. This is probably where officers would have gone to um, would have gone to prepare for battle. It is dominated by a massive table in the centre of the chamber, and on it is a gridded map of of the of the Lothsal Bight, which is kind of the local area. You notice that there is actually the Felkir 
fell cave right in the middle of this map. Um, you see that there are the small ships and, and large kind of prodding moments there uh, where it would look as though other, um, you know, where people would move ships around to try and prepare in terms of a strategic sense. You see that there are four, that there are four chairs. Uh, behind them there are two ornate looking doors and you also see that there is a whole heap of doors running off this, uh, running off this chamber. But probably the biggest thing that you see is at the chair directly opposite you, you see that there is a man, would you call him a man? A, 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 a waterlogged, rotting corpse. You see that he's got a straggled grey beard. You see that he's actually got kind of barnacles and oyster shells and growths for eyes. And he's slumped with one hand on one of these sliders, kind of like dead to all intents and purposes on the, uh, at, the, at, the, at the head of this table. So you can see where the, where the large um, uh, kind of pinkish looking, uh, looking chair is. That's where he's located. Well, uh, the door wasn't an illusion. Well, mistakes were made. I apologize. Uh, what do you what do you see, Norman? Because you still got to take magic working. The two doors to the south now have that similar glow of magic. Follow Curtis again. Uh, this is the the captain walked in the other direction. Correct? He did not want. To, he did not come this direction. Uh, look. At this stage, I've still got Lafaria and Nassima, and he's standing oh. at, the, at, the, at the head of the stairs. So he's kind of looking down the stairs. But as you charge your way into the into the door, he'll follow. Uh, it's fine. If you guys want to take the lead, he'll follow. Does, does this guy look hostile at all? Because I feel like as soon as I saw a dead-looking dude looking at me, I'd probably just blast him. Uh, he's a corpse, shrunk down. So right now, he's not hostile whatsoever. Oh, he's just kind of sitting there. I'm gonna yeah, go over. And, oh, okay. Chair. I'm gonna go over and study him. Uh, Walking again, or still being dragged along by Gal Rock. It ties you to me like a balloon. You can switch off levitate if you like, or walk on the ground. I'm just gonna kind of walk up to him and just kind of tilt my head a little bit and just kind of study. Just um, medicine check. What on earth are we doing getting cargo on a warship with battle plans underneath the hull? I told you she was this year, man. Uh, well, it's, he's dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna reach out and just kind of poke him, just like right in the, the temple. Uh, your finger kind of goes into the flesh a little bit, and you get this squelch and a wet feel. As, as the flesh gives way. Okay. There's two doors to two doors to the south that appear to have magic behind them. Oh, that'll be okay. But first, I want to look at this map. I want to kind of check out this map and see what's going on. Is there? What, what are they playing? This so the the bear's not on this map. Is there, is there it, a bear? Make an make an investigation check for me. Yeah, Galra, your specialty. Can I, can I assist with this? Can I uh, yep. check so out the map? so you can be the second to do it, for sure. And this is investigation? Yes, please. Uh, much better. Uh, yes, you see that there is uh, the, the, uh, the, the Pavina is, um, is on this vessel. Uh, and it looks as though there is another ship of the line and a frigate. So what it looks like is it's there are three vessels to each side of this map. So there's a large boat, one of which is the Provina, the other one is a frigate, and there are other smaller support vessels on it, as if they're as if they're kind of manoeuvring around each other. So you can kind of see that there are three lines of ships there on the map, one of which is absolutely the Provina. I could make Provina. way better model ships in these. This is. Look at that work. It's shoddy. I'm so I won. I'm just gonna stand angry about it. Shoddy. So, so basically, this looks like a um, you know a a map where you would have like a, a faux battle 
you know, like a strategy sort of a map. Right. Uh, for placing troops, things like that. Okay. Um, interesting. Can I pick up the po- the Povinir? Po- 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 uh, sure, no, when you, you reach over and grab the Povinir, and at the exact same time as you reach to touch, this creature lurches up. The dead one? The dead one. <laughs> holds one of these paddles, and you see it turn slowly and just start pushing across the map before you're able to touch it and positions it into 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 position it then looks down grabs another one and pushes a frigate as if it's lining them up oh enchanté i will grab the other pusher are we doing a mock battle here with this guy can i are there other other boats that i can fight no. him with just two boats he's moved the, the porvenir and a frigate Right? What That's type of correct. ship did we come in on? Uh, you came in on a brigandine, so not this type of ship. Okay. So, so you're okay. No, no, this is not there. the time. Uh, th- I mean, you guys realize that he is dead and now he is animated, right? This is, yeah, seems normal to me. This is not normal, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. My mother always said if there's a ghost that wants to play a game with you, you should play it because. No, that, that's not right. Thank you, Galrock's mother. That's exactly what I was thinking. No. We... I, uh, I, I wipe my hand, uh, his brain slime off of my hand onto his own clothing <laughs> and then start walking towards the back of the cabin. Is there a tactical change in the way that he moves ships? Uh, yes, there is. It's as though he's, he's kind of starting to move it around. So, um... Let's go, uh, Norman. Let's uh, let's have a, a skills challenge, my friend. Yeah, let's go. You and I. Can, I, can I assist Norman in this? Is that one skill? Uh, no. This is this is literally a one-on-one battle as the uh, as the as the as the, the drowned tactician, and I'll, I'll actually show you what it looks like. Um, the drowned tactician takes his position at the table. Can you see our little ghostly man? He disappeared. He disappeared. He was. He was there. there. There he is. There he is. As the drowned tactician takes his place at the uh, at the table, um, let's. I just need to have a quick. Uh, can we? Shall we? Actually, yes. You can be assisted. Shall we? Shall we start up? Can we change the map? Can we go to yep. uh, the naval combat mini game for me? I didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> I saw the button. I was like, I Oh my god! No, this is a real thing. This is a real thing. Amazing. Welcome to Battleship Medieval Style. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you guys are, are operating the left-hand vessels here. Um, and so uh, I guess what I'll look for is a team of uh, a team of three to and and I'll, I'll say that Norman, Norman as he uh, as he started can, can operate the ship of the line. Um, for the others, I, I'd like two people to nominate uh, as, as uh, people that are going to operate the frigate for them. Two people to operate the frigate. Okay. So, so there's a frigate each on the on the dark brown side on the left on the on the, on the black team, if that makes sense. Can I get two more to operate the frigate? I frigate? mean, I was already handling one of the ships. So I'd be like, sure. Okay, that'll be yours. And I... done, Serenity. You can have the other one. So what I will then do then is uh, Quinn and uh, and Maya. If I can get you, uh, if I get, can get you guys to actually be my assistants on the other side. All right, just so that everyone gets throw the game. Practice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to happily I, watch I want, all of this happen. I want uh, to eat and throw down my uh, my uh, Kraken wood figurine I have in my pocket, but I'll hold it off for now. So what? So what? We lose. What I'll get you to do is it's uh, not a Kraken. You, you can double click your ship. Hopefully, you can double click your ship. Please tell me you can double click your ship. Okay. Uh, I can single click it, but not double click it. No. Frustrating. What, uh, can't do all the dub- I can take the south one. Okay. I just- uh, where are these guys? Oh, it's in the mini game. I got you, bud. Yeah. It's great. Did you, uh, you actually saw a button to play this? Yeah, I saw a button to play. I didn't want to say anything, but I saw a straight button. I just legit thought it'd be funny to take this ship 
as a souvenir. Oh, I just made everybody an owner. Little things. Little things oh, I can double click. I can double click it now. I just oh, made everybody an owner, so you should be able to affect all the ships. Excellent. So what we so what you will see is you each ship has a movement under speed with inches. So you'll see that there's two, three, four inches for your for your vessel under speed. Um, you'll also see that you've got attacks with your multi-attack and with your cannons and bits and pieces like that. Okay, so you can see that you, you can make two attacks with cannons and so on and so forth. Uh, and so uh, what we what we effectively do is, is play this as a trip as a as a mini combat. So at the beginning of your movement. Each ship can move 45 degrees by uh, using shift and this kind of tilting of shift, so you can move one click in either direction. You can take your movement in inches, and then you can do another 45 degree turn before firing. Does that make sense? So we get four inches of straight movement, and then we also get two 45 degree rotations. Uh, you get two. You get two 45 degree rotations. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, cannons can only be fired off the side of the vessel. You can't fire from the fore and aft. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. So what's, what's right. the range on the cannons? Uh, it should say it on the cannons. So it looks like uh, for the larger ones, it's twelve inches. For the smaller ones, it's twelve inches. So twelve inch, twelve inch range for everything. How did you turn it? I'm sorry, with the forty fiver. Uh, sh hold, hold down shift and use your pinwheel. Aha. Uh -huh. Focus fire, lads. Focus fire. Bring down the smaller ships first. All right. So I am going to roll initiative for everyone, and then we'll just walk through, walk, walk through who goes. Yeah. So has everyone claimed their their vessel? Do we know who's on, who's doing what? I think we're all owners of everything. So I, don't know. I have the yeah, middle okay. big one. I have the southern yep. one. Yep. Okay. Excellent. I take the north. The northern, northern one. Fantastic. Nope. And so I've got Quinn uh, hovering over the one on the north. On the on the right hand side, and I've got so Maya. Can you take the southern white ship? Yep, right there. That's great. All right, everyone ready? Let's play Battleship Dungeons and Dragons style, which is just Wait, so, so, entirely strange. So, uh, oh my god, I'm, am I am I playing? Wait, you are playing. So, but not. I'll, I'll let you know when it's your turn. How does that sound? So. Uh, okay. First up, I've got the northernmost frigate, so uh, on on the black team. So oh, I that's believe, me. Uh, oh dear. Uh, that yes. Hold sure. on, I'm just trying to find how to turn the music down just a little bit. Uh, go to the bell. It looks like a bell. Uh, click on that, mm -hmm. and you should see some sliders that allow you to turn down the ambient. Playlist is the one you want. Playlist, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry, hard of hearing, girl. <laughs> really can't <laughs> Suddenly can't couldn't hear anybody say anything. I can't hear anything. So what I'll what I'll get you to do, Serenity, if you left click the frigate and then you can hold down Shift and use your pinwheel to tilt it one in either direction. I'm not getting a pinwheel when I hit Shift. No, you, you have to use your mouse wheel. wheel. Mouse wheel. No mouse wheel. Sorry, oh, gotcha. Mouse wheel. Okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There you go. Yep, so okay. you can move it one click and then you can okay. then you can hold down control and your 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 vessel can move four inches. Ooh, already. Good boy. Is this yeah. here? This is this is this is cover, essentially, right? These islands? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can't shoot you shan't you can't shoot through an island. Okay. I love it. Jared's mind tactically is like I so is each square is one inch. One inch. One inch. Okay. But, okay. but the easiest the, the easiest way is to hold down control, hold control and then and then do it that way and you can see how far you move. Yeah. So that's three inches, that's that's looking good. And if you if you if you do from your if you do the line from your ship, mm -hmm. uh, you measure it out and then you press space and it'll actually move. It'll move oh, it okay. for you. Yeah. So Two, three, four. Yep, that's four inches from there. If you just let it go and press space, bam. And then you can you can tilt one more time. So you can do one more 45 degree tilt. Nope, I'm good with that. With that? Okay. So. Can, we, can we ready an action in this? 
no, 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 you can't. It's a, okay. it's a, it's a, it's a turn, move, turn, shoot. That's it. Got it. Okay. Uh, I've got the northernmost frigate on the right hand team. It's... All right. Uh, after moving there, can I sight the enemy? Yep, you certainly can. All right. And you, and you can probably uh, roll to attack the enemy too, if you like. I would much. Uh, I'm gonna fire two cannons. With multi Boom! Well. Cover. So, uh, that endure. There we go. Attack! Fire! Oh, yeah. First, first cannon fires. Uh, Does she have oh. like covers? It's part of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a hit. Do some damage, please. Right. For our viewers watching, this stream just became a two-part one-shot series. <laughs> we'll not damage. be finishing this series tonight, so. Uh, doing eight points of damage. So, um, can I get you Serenity to change uh, to do a minus eight hit points for your frigate, and then fire again, please. please. Quinn. Ah, second volley. Yeah, fucking team are you on? Please come back and watch next week. Yeah. Oh. Natural one. Natural one. Yeah, sure. I'll I'll allow that. So uh, so part of the the ammunition explodes, and what you guys now notice is that on these vessels are these tiny ghostly animated figures that are literally yeah. starting to load cannons. And as the ammunition explodes, you see a few of these little, these tiny little figures just, ah, and just kind of leaping, <laughs> leaping off the, uh, it's off the- Amazing. Off it's the wizard dog. chess, guys. Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> when, oh, that, as, as uh, that happens, I say, uh, do your little figures do that? <laughs> uh, they will soon. Uh, uh, Quinn, can I? Uh, you take seven damage from the ammunition explosion. That's what you get, Quinn, for traitoring us. Is <laughs> uh, that what well, uh, I mean? Uh, and then I only move three inches. Can I only move? I move and then fire, and continue moving or no? Uh, no, it's a move. A tilt, move, tilt, fire. That's it. Okay. Once, and, 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 and not in any order. You just, you just have to. Sorry, you just have to. It's it's not a very co it's not a very uh, sophisticated game. It's probably for the better, to be frank. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's get into some Monopoly, guys. Come on, let's just do this. Norman, go for it. Norman's turn. Tilt. Move, but I don't have to use all my movement, right? You do not. If I move here, does that still give me line of sight on the frigate boat? Twelve inches. Yep. I want to go from there. Yeah, that's a fair Yeah. So I'm going to go ooh, to here. Absolutely. Uh, you, would, you, would have, you would definitely have a shot. Do I, I don't have to use the tilt, though, right? I can continue to hold this position. Correct. Yeah. And I will fire on the tiny frigate. Excellent. Go for it. Oh, shit. Okay. Multi attack cannon. Sure. First Roll. attack. Hit. Uh, where's attack? Oh. Click the little dice next to the cannon. <clears throat> Click the B20 next to the cannon. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Did that roll? I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it. Mm -mm. It's the good dice, right? Just Quinn's natural one. Stop bringing it up, man. It's not cool. <laughs> oh, did I just... Oh, wait, here we go, here we go, guys. There, there you go. go. You got it. Wrong. Did it attack? Click the attack. I have to go click on the attack. I... In chat. In I chat, did, did, click attack. I did. I did. I can't click it anymore. Uh, Let me try this again. Let me, maybe I'll do this one more right. time. Can't. No, in the the chat window, you should. Be I know. Right. I see it. I know. It's it's. I clicked it. It, it interacted, and then it went gray on me. Uh, I can uh, do I, one. I put I put it up in the chat, so whether that whether that works, whether that's an issue. We could just roll a d20 and add. Oh, that's the we damage to go that. that. Interesting. But that's a good sign if you can roll damage. <laughs> yeah, I rolled it from the uh, from the thing, but I can't. I can't. Whatever, I can't roll is. Uh... Uh, roll a d20 if you like. You get plus five to it. Okay. Okay. Did it somehow come up as a pop out, like a second separate window? Oh shit! Sorry guys, I rolled a <laughs> chat here. <laughs> the ship says one d20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I was trying to tell you about this aggro. Yeah, we go. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> and I'm not sure that it's, a, it's all a miss. So, okay. no, that, that's so I'll roll another one. Yep. So close to the 20. And like, and like, and then, oh, uh, that is yeah. your hit. That is a hit. So roll that D8 damage for me. Uh, and this is going to you, oh, Mayor, I think. That's one damage <laughs> to your ship, Mike. This Christ. is what you get for rolling on D&D Beyond all the time. I, well, I mean... I <laughs> and your third, your third, your third ship, uh, shot, please. As the, uh, oh, ship I line. have three shots! You do. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Another D20 here. That's another hit. So five. two hits. Yep. And then I'll roll damage again. Oh, yeah. there we go. There Suck we go. It. Yep. So, uh, the ship to the south takes nine damage total. Oh, who is that? That's Gibbs. Yeah. Mine. Okay. Gibbs getting smashed on over here. Uh, the well, Corvina. No, wait. Why, why is it? Sorry, being... sorry, my bad. He's got too many guys. <laughs> there we go. I got too many guys going on. Me my ship is doing a little yeah. dance. Quick, quick. Okay. The Corvina starts to move. Well, Is this one here? Yeah. Uh, this one takes the eight damage, right? Uh, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to figure out how to do that. I got you. So if you click your token and then right click the eight in uh, in the chat window, it should say apply damage. Or maybe that's just a GM. It might just oh, be. I just, no, I found I, it. I manually inputted it. I, I right clicked and then on the okay, and then where it says, I need um, it to the one also. Ooh, wrong thing. You already, you, already did, you already took the one damage. I got it, right? Oh, you already did the one damage? Yep. You're good. Okay, so Majestic Fable, or yours? You're the, la you're the last guy on the brown, on the black team. You right. right. might be able to focus fire the Provena. <coughs> I know what I'm doing. Okay, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> He's done this before. Well, my mother says when you're in a mock ship battle with the ghost. He's never done this before. <laughs> He's never done this. Myself, so give my, give my main man some cover there and I will fire. And I tell them to sing the sea shanty. Wow, teaming up on I Gibbs like, over here. All right, we our time. All right. I start singing a sea shanty. Uh, I'm glad I'm not in this. This is brutal. I'm uh, okay, so cannons. I won't be either soon. <laughs> I won't even get a chance to play my turn. <laughs> I know. It was like I Thanos. Like she got Thanos snapped yeah, over here. I think. Plus five, right? Yeah. Uh, that is delayed. Does not hit. You need a twelve. Oh. Uh, second job, right? The ship just ducks a little bit. Uh, also, <laughs> Mr. Gibbs, you have to fight another day. <laughs> don't be saying I'm the tea shanty, okay? It's affecting right. myself. Yeah. If you oh, were, <clears throat> I thought you knew what you were doing. Come on. All right. So uh, you're you're last. So uh, take you take your movement and shots. It's, it's all yours. Mm, I get to go now. Revenge. Revenge. Okay. <laughs> so no, does she have to? Hide. No, that's true. So how does the 45 degree angle thing work? You can only turn 145 at a time? Yep. 145, take your movement, and then a second 45 if you want to. Okay. Let me try and figure out how to move to this without, because I want to be able to count control. the... You can hold, press control. control. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. And that'll, that should you show have you. To, you have to move, like... In the direction you Like that? Yeah. 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 One... Mm. In the space bar to move there if you want to. There we go, and then you get, okay, one more, then. you get one more tilt, if that makes sense. So one more, one more. Well, I don't think you're gonna no, not that, that way. Can I, I make that? You cannot. It's gonna go Ooh, wide from there. Thanks for playing Gibbsy Poo. Right. <laughs> you should have gone to there, Gibbs. Oh, you're gonna get blown up. Brutal. All right, so we're back to the figure at the top, uh, which uh, I believe was... Me. Uh, the black one? Yeah, yeah. 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 So can I... Move after I fire? Uh, no, it's no. a tilt move tilt fire. Okay, cool. I'm Is it gonna... tilt move fire? It's tilt move tilt, tilt, tilt fire. fire. Okay. Like. Tilt move tilt fire. That's not how to do it. And the French, they, they, they made one that was a reverse tilt. 
Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> don't, don't confuse us anymore. It's also that special rule. I, I We're. <laughs> We're not going to bring up what the French would do in this situation. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean? Multi attack. What is it's just you get two attacks. Oh, you just okay. Get two yeah. That oh, and then it's a lot of. Two attacks. Okay. Yep. Revolution. Then... So you don't want to move or tilt no, at all. I'm just going to shoot at the little brown like white. Forget. At, yeah. Why not? At, 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 yeah. No worries. Far away. Okay. Um. Yeah. Natural equipment. Okay. Okay. Am so, I... uh, where it says cannons, there's like that gold orange D twenty. Ah, there we go. Okay. okay. Mm. I clicked and the thing. Up. Yeah. Which only works for you, I think. <laughs> I mean. It works yeah, for I clicked it and it didn't do the thing. <laughs> the at the bottom right, oh, next, there's a bunch of dice. There's a D20 yeah. okay. option down there. <laughs> D20. That's so oh, weird. Oh, it works for oh, me just for. Now they appear. Now they appear. They're just. Y'all just too impatient. No, I just You're rolled right. it. One of those was. Oh. Me. Okay. So this isn't actually for, for players, and which is a good It worked for Quinn, though, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. It totally worked for me. It is. All right. Well. Uh, that is yeah. Easy. yeah. Roll, your D8, roll your D8 damage, and Queen, this is coming for you. Suck it, Queen. <laughs> it's just a straight D8. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, so you guys know, you can scroll oh. up to the one that's already in there and just hit the attack button, and it'll make a fresh attack with the cannon, so you don't have to redo the D20 every time. Just scroll up in chat and hit the button. Okay. I'll try. And go hit attack for my second attack. It didn't do anything, did it? It didn't do anything. Yeah. No. Okay. That's what it did for me. Like, I clicked it, and it, it had no response. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to roll a d20 then. And then plus five. Looking rough there. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I'm the game. Oh, oh no. Yes. Oh, yes. Queen, revenge is yours. Oh, no. He did do more damage to himself last time than he did to you, so. That is true. I... <clears throat> Both the, the, what is it called? You guys are so mean. What are we? Both your frigates. For, 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 frigates oh. Both of them are getting, like, taking the same damage. Mm -hmm. Like, when one gets hit, both of them are getting the, that damage. <laughs> oh, did they share oddball? I don't know, that shouldn't happen. Uh, oh. Really? Oh, you're on different hit point totals. I'm not sure that's correct. I think you're okay. Okay. That's right. Okay. They are you both, both, right now. They're both Fine. Yeah, let me do something real quick. Are they? Are they? Yep, there's my, my tilt. If I tilt it uh, right, I'm uh, supposed to tilt more? I don't know. Right. My thing didn't that's, tilt. That's, uh, thank you. Thank you. That, I think I've, I have uh, fixed that. Ah, issue. there we go. Wait, the only problem is the bottom frigate's getting tilted. That's alright. We'll just remember, I guess, it's going up and down. Oh, I can try fix it. That's weird. Because the, the actor data is not linked, so I shouldn't there be doing that. Yeah, wait, that's so it could weird. Could be they're both collected, it. maybe? Like, there might be. I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am I in a position to fire? <laughs> uh, not tilted like at that. At an island. At the island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much right at the island there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I wasn't tilted with. with is that good or no? Um, like Can't you move um, forward? If you move forward, yes, potentially. Let's have a look from here. No, even still. Yep, right up there, as if you're nosing the island. Sure, you're right <laughs> up in the tower. So. I like this. Yeah. I like this strategy. Okay. Yep, I'll allow I'm that one. The suicidal uh, for the island. Yes. <laughs> Before we run, run aground, <laughs> we're now a land. Uh, there was just one job to do. Oh, wow! <laughs> and it all came down to you, and you Wait, screwed you the pooch. I think Quinn was oh. helping at the whole time. See, you guys are like you traitor, but I'm helping you. Why are you? 
Quinn just blew himself See, I just up. I killed myself. Wait, we're, we're, just, we're putting on an act, so it's for the GM. Where is Nightwish for this right now? Uh, to to, uh, to the, the, the drowned... Uh, the, the, he, he looks frustrated. He can't, you see his barnacles growing as he kind of pounds the table and, and, and oh, sneers no. down. As okay. as you see that the small figurine is kind of half exploded, and you see that that it's starting to sink into the map, and, and, and you see a lot of these kind of animated sailors kind of slowly drowning in the ocean in the map. <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the figures now will make so much money. This imagine my figures animated. <laughs> Uh, and so it's over to you, uh, Norman. Your 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 go. I do believe uh, you're in my way, aren't you? Can I can I shoot over the ship? Cannons can be raised and hurled over ship. I'm just throwing it out there. I think Quinn gets kill of the night for tonight. Yeah. All right. I'm going to. Uh, Not the fire. pelican. <laughs> I'm <gonna> fire. <laughs> fire. Fire. Oh! <laughs> Welcome to the crew, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. All uh, right. So uh, you'll take four points of explosive damage as the uh, as the as the gunpowder explodes on your deck. How Wait, come the... wow, these little ghost sellers are extremely <laughs> confident? The maestro didn't start? work on that one. How'd you guys reduce uh, the health here? Just right click on it and then like, use the oh. HP at the bottom. Oh, okay. I see. Thank you. All right. Let's try, let's try that again. <laughs> We didn't get a song on that one. Uh, that's and oh <laughs> man! You rolled all the lowest numbers possible. <laughs> yeah, Rock, I'm gonna need you to finish that chip. Alright, that's my turn. It's because you weren't singing loud enough. <laughs> oh no. See, Limithron's out there watching right now. You guys you guys gotta do his his little battle map here justice. I'm trying. You made these little figurines too OP, let me throw in. Yeah. All right, so the Porvino opens fire. The, po the Porvenia opens fire. Oh gosh, I'm going to die. I think you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to die. Oh, oh uh, my god. I'm going to die, I'm dead. Triple 20. Um, so you... How come the Maestro's not working all of a sudden? Uh, he might ex he might overpack his gunpowder and explode, so you might still. Be uh, so seven points of damage. We should have got a critical that's hit song on that. That's a that's a yeah, that's a pretty good critical, honestly. Oh, I'm playing it because it didn't play it on its own. Yeah, very good. And uh, fires again. Uh, that was yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your character dies in real life. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Oh no. Uh, so that does another seven points of damage. Yeah, no, I'm dead, dead. Alright. No! I yell like, no! <sighs> ah! Okay, we're good. <laughs> Sorry. No! We're all okay, yelling. So at, at this point, Gallic does start weeping. <laughs> oh, here comes the cleaving and weeping. <laughs> And you guys know I'm about to cleave this ghost. Sorry, I lost the form of the It's okay. just the game. Form uh, game. Oh, we don't know oh, that, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, you, you guys just dove right into a game with a ghost. I'm just throwing this out there. <laughs> I got pulled in. I didn't even know I was until. You're, you're on the ghost side, so. What happens if you lose? Turn, right? Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. I'm on the ghost side. Uh, no, it is. That's the 12, though. I oh, that was uh, for the initiative? Yeah, I lost the poor veneer off the combat tracker, so I'll put you back in. Oh, okay. uh, that is a hit. Nice. Do some damage. Get in there, big so, guy. Eight, right? yeah. yeah. Are you actually using your axe? No. Uh, it's four points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're weeping, you might just start cleaving the whole table. I'm just saying. That's true. I am Wait. cleaving. Somebody doesn't stop me. He's still alive, so second attack. Okay. Oh, the 
uh, just it. Just enough. Oh. I feel this one in my bones. Damn it. So it's taken six in total, so it's got five hit points left for this, for this vessel, and it's back over to the ship of the line. That's oh, no, good. sorry, my bad. Oh, me? Yeah, okay. Two. I'm going to pivot. And then um, um, you can't move that I can't move that way. That's going backwards. Oh. <laughs> but you can. You can just fire on me right now. Yeah, right. But then not move. So no, fire. I can't fire from right here though. You can. Uh, yeah, after you pivoted, you can. Yeah. Oh. Okay. But you can't move after that. So if you want to get to safety. There is yeah, no safety move before you fire. <laughs> there is no safety. If we don't kill you, your ammunition I... will probably explode because <laughs> they are just the most incompetent. But I thought if I fired, I couldn't move. Right. Correct. Correct. <sighs> I think do I do? Murphy and Lolly's got it right. I, I had a close twitch. It was blowing everything down, so I can't read. She said you all went an expense paid trip to a watery grave. <laughs> yes. It's a new club in town. Okay. It's a tentacle bar. What's it gonna be? Uh, I don't know. It's a tentacle bar. I'm gonna just. I'm just. Fire, 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 fire. Or run. Nobody wants to go to the tentacle spa. <laughs> I, I do. Is this four? Uh, that's three. Three. That's three. Four. That's four. There we go. So just press space and it should oh, move you all the way up Let me try that again. It's so right here? Yep. Oh. Yeah, ish. Yeah. And you can tilt once more. She's drifting. Oh. She's drifting a little bit, but it's okay. okay. <laughs> that way. She's listing to the right. Norman, you go after the uh, mayor. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll split them, we'll split them, we'll split them. Okay, him. ship of the line. It's your turn. So, Norman, over to you. Oh. I'm going up. <laughs> I think I've got three movement. The big boats have three. One, two, three. Oh, I don't know how to get them in my. I mean, you can go south then. And you I can tilt once more that, if you choose. What would you say? Tilt once more if you choose. Uh, yeah, I will. You should go less distance, man. Or like go closer to the island so you can't get a movement. Um. <laughs> Sex the tactical half orc. No, 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 no. I still, <laughs> I, do what you want. Do what you want. Uh, I still don't think he can get line of sight on me without some. I guess the only creative with creative juice there. Uh, I'm going to uh, tilt this way. That's my turn. Yeah, so, all right. So the four veneer is going to tilt that way. Bonsai. Yeah. I regret nothing and. <laughs> and then I, I regret nothing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, over to the frigate. All yours and this one. Why is mine moving? Oh. <laughs> I can go right up to the shore, right? You can. Uh, hitting land, however, is a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go. Sounds good. It's a okay. chess game now. Are you it's, it's, it's become cat and mouse. Alright, Gibbs, you're up. I'm hide and seek. It's a game of cat and mouse. Indigo will be a. game of rat and tobacco people. Don't act like you're not in that game, too. Four? I can't wait. I can't see the numbers. Yeah, that's four. Yeah, that's four. Nice. And then one more tilt and then... if you wish. And then back um, up to the one up. Nope, not that way. Wait, what happened? I wanted that <laughs> way? Uh, I think. I, think going... I want to be facing. I don't know if you can uh, do a full 180. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. You're doing Tokyo Drift. This is Tokyo Drift. <laughs> me again? <laughs> do I have line of sight from here? Uh, one way to find out. <sighs> Just go all in. That's we are uh, pushing past the clock. That's what I was worried about. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I could hit it from here. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Fuck you. 
Gibbs. Yeah, we love you, Gibbs. More of a danger than myself. That's a miss. Oops. God damn it. Second shot. Oh, so that's, uh, no, that's, that's, that's a 13. It's a 13, right? Plus 5? Yeah. Oh, it's plus 5. <laughs> D10. Yeah. Oh, D10 for us, is it? D wow. No, is no, it no, no, I was, no, I, I had the wrong one selected. So 6 damage. Uh, yeah. Aw, oh, dang. My, my little shit goes bye-bye. <laughs> oh, you bleed the poor beer again. Boom. Alright, we got, we got him right where we want him, Galrock. No, he's going to take three rounds just to get around the corner. Yeah. Can I just say, I didn't take a shot at any of y'all. <laughs> You're Which the nicest. So much <laughs> that seems like a you problem. Uh, <laughs> you are the <laughs> nicest opponent ever. It's not a ship of, that's not a ship of the line or the frigate problem. This is pacifist battleship. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, y'all just fucked me up before I could do anything. Oh, uh, no. She's just like shooting off in random directions, like, I'm fighting! <laughs> I mean, don't, don't, don't you have I one more turn? Oh, yeah, you have one more turn, I think, don't you? Oh, I have one more turn. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Oh, Shantae. My turn? Yep. Yep. Oh, he's coming at you, too. Oh, shit. Without trying to run into the island. Yeah, we'll run into the island. Oh, okay. he just we'll ran himself around. around. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought, I thought it would, so that I'll go like this. So, yep. I was just directly like this, right? Yep. Yeah, you don't have Take much of an option for a 45 degree turn. Over like that, and then I'll yep. turn. Yep. I think you would have to turn yeah, first. That's cool. Where are we? Uh, oh, so, I mean, where was, so like this. Yeah, that's fine. You're taking your sweet ass time around that fucking island, aren't you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, for sure. Broad! Oh, Battle's gonna oh, be over. Can <laughs> Broadside! <laughs> Battle's over and Galrock comes chugging in. <laughs> <laughs> Just... uh, that would be a miss. Yes. That's a hit. Whew. That was almost a one. Ooh, so 13 total from ship of the line. All right. So it's, I think this is where it, it's you or I, Norman. It's you or I. So I we're, just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna see the glass. The nice thing is, if he shoots, he can't move. So that's kind of the play here. Yeah. Uh, so here we go. I'm like, I'm like Rudy. I'm like the, I'm like the Rudy. First attack that hits. Please. You're like the little dog in the old Looney Tunes cartoons that's always hanging out with the big bulldog. <laughs> Second hit. Also hits. So confident. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's Still confidence. Full of confidence. So, so much confidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank God. As long as it doesn't crit, we were okay there. Uh, you're right, okay. Tilt, move my four inches, and I fire, right? I can Ooh. Fire. You can tilt one more time, too, if you need to, but... You yeah, I will straight fire. Oh, we're tilted, all right. All right. Crit, 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 crit. Is that crit. 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 So, just, I'm across this 15 on Eight. Eight, damn it! One. <laughs> hey, nice try. You, you snapped a couple lines. <laughs> All right, that was that was that was more of a morale. I was te I was, <laughs> I was insulting their mothers. <laughs> Not that insulted. <laughs> You're insulting their shipbuilder. <laughs> hey, I insulted damage. Okay. Uh, it's your turn, right? Uh, it's your turn. Right, right. So I'm going to tilt. Yep. I'm going to... Oops. Can I yeah, push... Is that going to ram? We'll ram, which will stop your movement, and uh, we both take damage. We both take D6 damage from the ram. I know, right? Take what? D D6? D6. Yep. Can you ram and then fire? No. 
All right, well then it does. It makes more tactical sense than just to unload another volley here. Yeah. Need no. 15s. Just light them up. Night one. Nat one. Uh, Why are you? Why? <laughs> Could you roll? No. There's a. No, we got the other side. Yes. There's a 20. Nice. Oh, that's a good roll. And a 21 on top of that. Yeah. Oh. Nice. 12 points of damage. It's on one hit point. <gasps> oh, Don't worry. I'll it's, still kill this. It's I'll listing. This. It's listing to the left. Uh, so here we go. It's it's Shit. nothing now. Uh, it's going to fire. Norman's going Ooh. down. I gave it all I got, Captain. <laughs> Davy Jones is coming to claim you, lad. I'll make a little figurine for you. <laughs> a um, little, a little roll. Norman carving. Norman. Uh, three points of damage to. Okay, okay. To I can survive that. Line. Second attack. Dodge and weave. Third attack. Norman, go with a zigzag, zigzag pattern. It's Daddy needs not an eight. One. Oh, one. Oh, it's over to you. Uh, so oh, shit. Uh, I'm not going to get cocky. Um, so can you ram? Yes, he is. It'd be a guaranteed kill if you can ram. You don't have to worry about hitting. Can you move forward? Uh, no, because he can no. only turn 45 degrees. Yeah, he can move up you once. Oh, you can't move again, though. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Great. I'm still going to reposition here. Oh, perfect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's no crossfire. Well, a little crossfire. You need. You've got two cracks at this. Actually, you've got two cracks at this. What am I doing? Oof. And that is a, a miss. Fourteen is a minute. Hit. Fifteen. Fifteen is almost bad for the big one. Yeah, I'm gonna steal this one. Yeah. 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 That was How good. much and damage? What do I do? Overkill. Now you're rolling eight. Overkill. Uh, you do enough damage so that the the cannon fire actually starts to singe the map, and it's, you see that the 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 um, the Porvina starts to list, and you see a, a little tuft of white smoke, because it looks like this map is about to catch on fire. Well played. So uh, everyone, if we can move back to the Porvina map, which I'm I'm sure. like so excited. I like smack Lafiera on the back like so hard. <laughs> Does damage. Uh, very well done. Um, or it just like goes all the way onto the across the room. Yeah, you fly. Right? <laughs> You're floating still. Uh, once this happens, you see that this this uh, this creature, this ground tactician, this 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 seemingly undead-like barnacle-ridden creature, kind of taps his his uh, his little his little slider absentmindedly, as if he's, he's not quite sure what what happens, and then he, he kind of bows down, um, and then uh, he puts his hands on the side of his head and starts to pull, and you hear the sound of snapping bone and snapping tendons, um, and then you see as he falls onto the table, a whole stream of blue crabs kind of envelope and start to move across the desk. One of the crabs staggers towards Norman, and in its claw is a gold key. And it reaches forward and hands it to him. Uh, well played, crab creature. Well played. The crab seems to do a damp bow, scuttles back towards the corpse, and climbs back in to the skull cavity. We didn't we did need to see that. We should have yeah. fireball for them. So was it like a condo situation in there? Like an apartment building? Did they all and share that, like a one picture? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we have to call it for the for the evening. Um, thank you so much. That was not what I expected oh, whatsoever. Let me play some kind of crazy maritime like tic tac toe with a ghost, but I do appreciate it. And um, and as was kind of half announced there, we, like, we couldn't quite get a, a, a word in edgeways. 
hopefully we'll, we'll join you again next time for the second episode of the season. Indeed. I know it to people to, to do that. I think we are all very excited for that very scenario to happen again here next week on the Kronos World channel. Please uh, come check us out again next Thursday. And I, I believe we're all fairly confident in saying that we would like to uh, continue this and finish out this adventure mm -hmm. next week. Um, so please come back and uh, check us out next week on Thursday at 6 o'clock. Uh, also check out our show on uh, Sunday at same time, 6 o'clock, as well as our Frost Maiden show on uh, Tuesday, as well as uh, that 6 o'clock time. Uh, thanks again to Limitron. He is our sponsor for the channel. He is super awesome. He is one of the uh, co-creators of this amazing adventure that we've been running through tonight. And we've been having so much fun with that. Thank you so much for your hard work and dedication, <laughs> sir. Um, go check out his Patreon. He's got all kinds of awesome assets that'll take your campaigns to the next level while you're there go ahead and check mine out as well uh, it's at uh, chronos world over on uh, patreon all any support that we get definitely helps keep the channel going and keep all these awesome shows happening for you guys so definitely appreciate any support we get there um, also come check out our discord channel we have all kinds of new stuff coming up and we'd love to have uh, people you know coming into channel and hanging out and chatting with us all the time so please come and do that for sure uh for the rest of you i hope uh, all the players had a great time tonight thank you so much to serenity for joining us on the team here it was also her first night with us so we're very excited to have her join us on this team as well and we look forward to seeing you guys uh next week so please come back and see us again and yeah thank you so much to james for running the show tonight you're a freaking madman and a rock star and so. uh you've got a you got a website james where you do uh you do uh you do this i do um, uh, by all means come and check us out at rpg at home.com that's the word at not the at at because that would make no sense but come and check us out at rpg at home if you're looking for an online Absolutely, because you guys out there can have GM uh, James GM your campaign too, and that's fucking badass. So you should definitely look up his website. It's After not that, Thursdays at five. Just <laughs> not Thursdays. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. All right, y'all. Have a great night. Come see us again. Bye. Thanks very much. Bye.